cars trundle and bounce by him. For all those on their way to the daily commute. The various pleasure craft and commuting vehicles drive down the highway, cutting a fine line towards the grand city in the distance. But for one man, he pedals with a ferocious determination, driving an old rickety bicycle down the side of the sidewalk. It bounces as he feels, to some extent, the eyes on him. A businessman! Yet still, in his somewhat nice suit, the nicest thing he owns, carrying himself on a pedal, pedal bicycle to a nearby suburb in the city. That, that's an unusual sight. The man keeps himself going forwards. As he rides into the distance, he takes his bike down sort of a path off the side, connecting to a awkward area on the bay. It rests out looking over the city, granting a good view to anyone who might go outside with drinks or food. But due to location, and perhaps due to the time of day, no one's here this morning. Beyond the usual. After all, Who would be at a bar, drinking, at 6 a.m.? Isaac throws open the door and slowly walks inside. Hey, guys. See, you're still up hey, late. Hey, stranger. Hey. What's the occasion? Uh, he moves his way over and sits down. Curious how you guys are making out with the whole uh, heroism thing. The the man in a suit of armor next to him waves a hand around. Heroism. You're going off about the heroism thing again. Man, it's terrorism. He slams the table. Listen, what we're doing here and now, no ifs, ands, or buts, we're causing issues for the government. He gestures out <laughs> towards the city in the distance. Uh, just, uh, I don't know. Looks over to Cal, a person he's known since high school. Kinda hard to just slap the terrorism label on the whole thing. Why can't you spin it a little bit more flatteringly? Because it takes the edge off of what we are. Oscar slams the table again. Uh, sorry, Cal, yes. clean it up. <laughs> right. Yeah, you yeah. better. What, you think wood grows on trees? <laughs> He, uh, Isaac's like, I don't know, can you be revolutionaries or something? I'd be mean, close enough. <laughs> Oscar lightly shrugs his shoulders, looking over to Cal. So... I mean, you know... Hmm? You know my opinions on it, but the problem... It's about... It isn't about what we call ourselves. It's people are going to tell us, right? So... Yeah. Yeah. To go with terrorists, we gotta wear that with pride. We gotta show them what that means. <sighs> Revolutionaries is more accurate, but we're gonna get whatever we get. <laughs> Oscar continues fiddling with the device on the counter. So, how'd the thing go last night? Oh, suddenly he's curious. Uh, well, genuinely, we managed to sneak into one of the islands. Um, the place is messed up, man. Like, uh, at first, right, we had a we had a theory that what they were cooking in there was some sort of like they they have like a bunch of people like he like inner inner mingles his fingers connected like a hive mind like a like a big human battery or something but uh no nothing quite like that huh yeah it's it's oh, weird no, it was much worse yeah they've got like an idyllic town um inside the island and that's somehow power it, it's. It's messed up. Listen, we probably shouldn't be telling you this because as has been established, we're in, you're out. 
dude, go off to your day job. Go about what you're doing already. Ugh. Isaac sort of like looks away. Yeah, hey. I mean, like, functionally, I wouldn't be too much good for you guys anyway. Listen, we all got to do what we can do and what it's about. It's not about doing it because you feel like you have to. If you feel like you can't, then you can't. <sighs> if you feel like you shouldn't, then you won't. There's no point making a fuss about it. Eh. We're all still friends in this place. He look, gives a look at Oscar. <laughs> Oscar puts his hands up. Yeah, and just, uh, he struggles with the wording of this. I'm no hero. Uh, I mean, neither are we. We're just guys. That's kind of the point. It's not about being spe I mean, we've had this conversation before, but, you know. <laughs> it's not about being someone special. It's anyone can so if you can and yeah you know how it is <laughs> oscar's like we've nodding. had the conversation before i'm not gonna ruin you i'm not gonna throw it at you again it's fine i just wanted to make sure you guys were still alive because it's like you said normal people uh okay yeah i gotta i gotta go he stands up he looks back he's like Across the entire office, uh, big changes are happening. Everybody got a oh, mini yeah? fridge. Yeah, yeah. Things are Hence looking the suit, up, Isaac. I suppose. Yep, <sighs> big day. <laughs> Go show them what a normal man can do. <laughs> yeah, answer phone calls. <laughs> the man. Oh yeah. <laughs> the man waves, and uh, Oscar like looks over to you. So, you grew up with that guy? Oh god, yeah. Did I never tell you? <sighs> nah, it's just kind of surprising because, uh, most people, most people the second, like, the crimes came out would probably be calling, like, the knights or other authorities. But he just seems, I don't know, chill with it. I'm lucky to have him as a friend. I'll tell, him, tell you that for nothing. <sighs> well, he's hoping we don't drag him down with us. <laughs> Oscar turns and salutes the door as the vision almost fades away. One man. <laughs> I will not ping you on this map. <laughs> you need to find him. <laughs> Sits working away at his computer. Mini fridge installed. The entire day ahead of him. He sets to work. Performing the most important tasks of his grand society. It's been a few years since, well... The threats of violence and the world being consumed came to an end. This, this is the true ideal of peace. He said, uh, he thinks to himself, dragging a cup of coffee, barely scraping the wood. He turns over and looks at his new mini fridge. Sighs, closes his eyes and thinks. The vision almost, again, dances forwards. As he takes time apart from the office, now on lunch break, sitting and staring into the distance at the park. Calm, blissfully calm. The island whirls in the distance, almost a dome of fog and flame. This localized power source spreads its energy to the majority of this world, allowing it to flourish and grow. 100% environmentally safe and extremely conscionable. This is an energy source for the future. 
This is an energy source, both given to us and that allowed us to conquer the Coda. He folds his hands and thinks about that crackling power. And in that moment, he feels a tingle on his fingertips. It starts to draw itself backwards, connecting to his wrist and dancing back to his upper arm. When it locks on his shoulder, it feels like it almost cascades outwards, connecting to his nervous system. The man closes his eyes and focuses on the sensation. Allowing the power to spread and build in his arm, he slowly stands himself up, takes a step forward, holding his palm out. He looks at the fountain and he wills it to move. <clears throat> and uh, silence descends on the park. The other park goers stare over at the man, holding an arm outstretched at the fountain, sort of look away, making eye contact with anything else, their phones, the trees in the distance, and then move off into the distance. Isaac looks around, sheepishly picks himself up, and starts to walk away, taking his bike. He spends another day at the office. And time passes. <clears throat> the cycle continues later that night as just beyond sunset, the man drives himself forwards to his relatively small apartment. His friends would likely be out at one of the islands right now, infiltrating it and getting up to God knows what, but he feels the sting of the night air against his lungs as he drives his legs downwards, forcing the bike forward at an increased speed. It's not exactly his business. He almost stops at the edge of the park again, staring out into it. He opens and closes his palm again, feeling that sensation spread. As he thinks to himself, hmm. There used to be a form of practical application for those with abilities. Great heroes that have sort of fused into normal society at this point. The age and legend of heroes has sort of come to an end. Knights are now a hot commodity, something trendy and fashionable, not something you really aspire to be, beyond, well, being a superstar, being a celebrity. Fabulous secret powers and the like. Now that, that went away with the coda. He opens and closes his palm, remembering the sensation. <sighs> Damn it. Yeah, sure. He looks down into his phone and moves through a record log of messages from years back. A hotline that he was originally going to call back when the code and threat still existed volunteer to throw his life into that grand abyss. He hesitated, but now, if he remembers that sensation, maybe they're still on the line. He picks up his phone, schedules an appointment, and rides on. And in this way, time passes for Isaac. This world of stagnancy driving itself forwards. Until... Eventually, <laughs> the man finds himself at his desk again. He fidgets lightly in place as his phone goes off. A message from that very same hotline he called earlier. 
He looks down and over at it, picking it up. He braces it against the crick of his neck, and he's like, uh, uh, hello? Uh, hi. Um, this is Isaac? Mm, yeah, uh, thank you for bringing me in. Um, I, I was curious, uh, I was curious about the, about the tests. I was just wondering if, um, you know, the, uh, heroes, uh, it, I mean, like, um, if, uh, I would, I, if there was anything unusual happening with, uh, me, there's a shift on the far end, one paper picking up above the other clipboard moving, uh, Okay, uh, I don't know exactly how to tell you this. Um, I'm not a medical professional, but uh, it's common for men your age. Um, we, uh, we, we tested your blood work and we have reason to believe you are uh, pre-diabetic. That, um, that was the sensation you felt. Uh, I can recommend you to someone, but Isaac's eyes sort of glaze downwards, staring at the, uh, staring at the computer ahead of him. Later. Cow! <laughs> Isaac throws open the door and moves in. Oh, hey man, how's it going? Being a yeah, fuck it. Being an adult is bullshit, man. <laughs> he sits <laughs> down at the end of the counter. <laughs> oh shit! Did you not know? I'm so sorry. You had to find out this way. Yeah, man. Come revel in childhood forever. Help me build this bomb. <laughs> Oscar sits at the end of the counter. Fucking shit, man. How does it only get worse? <laughs> well. <laughs> You heard me talk about capitalism. Yeah, I yeah, no, I'm 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 living it. I'm I'm living it, man. I'm living it right now. <laughs> nodding, nodding, pouring him a drink. Bro, I'm supposed to cut back on sugar now. You know what's oh, in okay. everything? <laughs> Fucking sugar. Yeah, no, take that Hang away. On. Give me a water or something. I'm pissed. Yeah, he like puts away <laughs> the drink he's doing. Yeah, you're not gonna like what I have to tell you about alcohol. Uh, uh, <laughs> the man <laughs> stares at the ceiling and you feel a segment of his soul leave. <laughs> hey, listen. It's Yeah. Yeah. First of all, damn man, that sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's common for guys pushing forty. So, like, I, I don't know, whatever. Fuck, God, <laughs> he deflates on the counter. <laughs> Listen, it's just another thing that you're gonna get through. Cal puts a little umbrella in the uh, insert drink here i don't have real <laughs> bartending knowledge that doesn't have sugar in it <laughs> oscar like looks over at you and it's just like wait you guys went to high school together and he's pushing 40 how i guess he just got one of those faces he's <laughs> just looking over at cal <laughs> and cal just gives him a, a beaming smile <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, it like, is a mystery. Isaac, like... <sighs> okay. Hey, I, I guess I got a question. Um, What's up? That, uh, disturbances at the island the other night. Aren't you guys? Oscar, like, looks over Ooh. to you. I, us? Ooh, us? We would never get up to untowards... Actually, which night was this? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, two nights ago. Uh, the one where the, uh, I think a submarine got hijacked? Oh. Yeah, uh, how much do you like that mini fridge? Because, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, if we, if we get into that, you're not gonna be able to go back to that thing. <laughs> he sort of, like, folds his hands, looks at you. Be safe, okay? Hey, someone's got to do it. Yeah. Damn. <sighs> he uh, slowly stands up. You know, it's kind of naive, but... uh, 
Some part of me was really hoping that that hero thing was about to work out for me, but, uh, uh he, like, sort of looks around. Even with a phenomenal amount of power or whatever, not really use for it in the modern day, right? Like, what do you even do if you unlock fabulous secret powers? What use mm -hmm. do they really have if you're just going back to normal life? Uh, I well... What use is being able to whistle? Uh, pardon? <laughs> he looks over at you. Oscar starts laughing. <laughs> I mean... So the whole powers thing, right? Like... Yeah. It's... It's only special and a mystery because you don't have it. But when you do, it's just like another thing you can do. Uh, you can already do a lot. Like, I mean, that's kind of the point. You kind of like look, glance at the Oscar. That's, mm. that's, I mean, you really couldn't have more normal people than we do in this room right now, right? Yeah. But if I... you let that de determine what you do, then, I mean, Listen, normal's fake. He it's... looks down and, like, genuinely stares into his glass. It's, uh... How do I do this without going off on a tirade? <laughs> <laughs> um... No, go off. I could actually use the catharsis. <laughs> All right. I'll, skip. I'll tell you what. I'm going to skip over the thing about it being a societal way to, like... It, it, it... You know, it's oh, but that's my favorite mold. part, Oscar. All right, no, all no, right. we get, no, we get it, we get it, we get it. Go on, go on. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm getting a drink. He gets, his, <laughs> he takes a sip of it's water. He takes a sip of. <laughs> all right, so listen, it's like this. No. If there's a model that everyone's supposed to fit, then that's easy, right? You have something to go, to aim for, and it's gonna be something that most people are able to achieve without a lot of problems. Yeah. It's easiest for people who want to be in power if everyone fits into that mold. And it's easiest it's easiest to control people that way. But the fact is humans aren't shaped all like all the same. Trying to be normal is just trying to be what other people want you to be for their own benefit. And normal is hell, it's not just a it's not just fake, it's bad for you you get told you're normal you think you're not capable of more they don't know you're not wanted to be capable of more because then you start pushing back against the box isaac's mouth literally just hangs open <laughs> oscar oscar raises his glass and toast like cheers cheers so the question so like, becomes right like it's not if normal and power is specifically what they want you to be, like, what matters is you, my friend, right? He, like, looks over to you, Cal. What do you want to be? You nuts. Like, I'm not really... Uh, Oscar and I don't really go out to the place because it, we got handed it on our character sheet. So, hey, you have... Uh, revolutionary goals and you're gonna <laughs> and that's your skill set like like i say couldn't get more normal people than we got in here and we're out there doing it because we want to because we need to and if we were as normal as they want as like the people who we're struggling against want us to be it wouldn't be working he closes his mouth, looks down. That's kind of what I've always been trying to say. I guess I haven't been... I mean, I try not to go off too hard on it, because I know, like... I don't want you to feel like I'm gonna trying to make you be something that you're not. Trying to get you in on the thing that, I ha that I'm doing, that Oscar yeah, and I are doing. You kind of defeat the purpose, right? <laughs> yeah, like... Like, me telling you what to do is no better than society doing it, you know? Shit. And also, like, 
dude, I respect you for living your life the way that you need to. I've never thought lesser of you for that. Uh, I guess, like, huh. in that case, it comes down to what I want to do. And, like, yeah. not necessarily what... Shit, this is hard, because, like... It's, uh... It's a weird thing to say, but uh, what I want to do might actually be kind of impossible. I mean, who told, who says it's impossible? Like, if you were talking about, like, flapping your arms and flying, then yes, maybe. But you'd still get a pilot's license. He... Yeah, even without being able to fly. So... What do you want to do? You say those words to him. And this is all that's running through his head. As he stares straight ahead. At a familiar park. The world ignites and burns around him. Long lines of brilliant red fire. He watches as the peaceful society he's enjoying for the last few years crumbles and ignites around him. He stumbles to the side as a segment of this world rips itself away, burning in a way that he's never seen. It hurts his head to look at. It's like space itself is bending inwards. Like the fire itself is claiming more than simply what it is igniting. And in this moment, it's Cal's words that ring through his head. He stares into that blaze. And he sees someone twisting and stretching away into that same spatial distortion. The man ducks his head down as his own words seem to become a curse that hangs around his neck. He places his head forward, and he runs into the blaze. The man's eyes close. As he thinks hard. No real chance to refute what Cal told him. No chance to understand how significant it was to him either. For Isaac, what he wanted to be in that moment, burnt away with the rest of the world. Because there's a certain reality. Being a hero being someone that protects and saves others requires one crucial, critical component. It requires people weaker than yourself to protect. For the man who discovered fabulous secret powers just days too late, for the very first Esper, there was no room to be a hero anymore. And in a situation like that, a man like that could only become the villain. On the rooftop, the derelict's winds rip on all sides. Deciding to take the conflict to a location that wouldn't cause too much devastation to the flame inside, Riddle and Isaac sort of stare each other down. Seder impassively smiling in the distance. Isaac looks over at Riddle and then stares beyond. It's a familiar cityscape. But now, it's been burnt down to cinders. Seems like Argos is putting up a pretty good fight out there. Oh, you managed to... Uh... You managed to pinpoint that he's handling the tactics. Hmm. Isaac, like, lightly nods a little bit. 
Strange thing. I'd expect with every how everything's sort of gone to hell, you'd be adjusting your strategy. Riddle shakes her head. There's no reason to adjust yet. Yeah, things move unpredictably, but that's every day. Regardless of how it goes. Um, at least right now, I don't really see a need to adjust our strategy. Isaac blinks. All of the chaos, the devastation. The fact that Vinter has now gone missing. Well, this is part of the strategy, huh? He scratches the back of his head, loosening up his limbs. And the fight out there? Riddle stares straight ahead. Oh, uh, I think I should make something abundantly clear. Uh, the fight out there, the way Argus is handling it, it's genuinely going great. So, give you a little, I guess, peek into the guy's mind. She, uh, she pauses and sort of starts to walk across the roof of the derelict. Um. Well. You honestly should have seen him, seen him back in Ciala. You know what the whole kidnapping thing? She says, looking over to Seder. Seder's expression uh, sort of falls as he listens to Riddle. The guy, um... Hmm. Even though we came up with a sound strategy, it didn't pan out exactly as he wanted. I saw him sort of fall to a personal low. The loss of every single person there weighing pretty heavily on his conscience. She looks out in the opposite direction. But just the same, immediately afterwards he picked himself up. He got moving again and he started uh, reorganizing not only Opia, he stood up to every challenge that's been thrown his way. So, simply put, if I'm a strategist, I can trust my strategy. And similarly, I can trust my tactician. Isaac's expression sets. Oh, Opie is pretty lucky. Yeah. So, I can say, with utter and absolute confidence, that man, after everything he's been through, he won't let a single person die. Hey, Jackson, back to the RTS map! The expectation's been set! Let's go! I detest you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me give you a situation update, my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Now no, I kind of no. just want to spite you. <laughs> Argos, which one? Which one? You know which what? Fuck, which let her die. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. You can let any of these wonderful people die, but, uh, you know, then you'll have to deal with Riddle looking at you and making those big watery eyes. He's going to be making and goop eyes at me anyway. Can you handle that? <laughs> In your current emotional state. <laughs> so where are we? So are we going here. As a reminder, Argos, your goal on this map specifically is you are going to you need to locate the six. You need to locate the six uh, giant Illyrian fruits that are supplying the uh, the the tree off in the distance of power. Cut every single one and then perform an attack on the tree. Every turn, and I will do it now, the, the Ilmerian tree generates more demons. Eventually, you will be overrun. Hold on, and then I gotta grab, you know, the most important one. You can stop anytime you like. <clears throat> It's fine. Listen, you got you got an infinite generation device on your team as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're not expendable. Uh, it's not. You're called Basilisk Ideal, but that's <laughs> really ideal. So, your job is to pick out the different uh, question marks on the map, discover the Omerian fruits, and uh, yeah, 
eventually uh, uh, pop them all and attack the tree. How many These fruits are... so far have we taken down <laughs> slash eaten? Three. Three. Yes. And that that was a special question mark down there. That yes. Really We're halfway there. There is a special sparkly question mark down at the bottom that uh, one of the fruits grant, uh, granted Basilisk in divine knowledge that uh, that that's a, that's a very special one. Um, this is a uh, casual reminder that this is a minefield. <laughs> um, this is a tunnel. You can spawn Different characters from the Helena doors. Uh, these are the stock of characters that are... Oh, Cal's on the field down here. Um, these are the stock of remaining characters. If you do not spawn them, they will remain with you in the derelict. So if you're feeling confident, keep them with you. <clears throat> I mean, after getting talked up like that. Yeah. <laughs> feeling awesome. Feeling uh, super fucking kind. Dude, Argos, you got this. Uh, so, uh, take your turn, my friend. All right. So, yeah, there's four question marks and three. Yeah. Three uh, remaining fruit. All right. So, I'll have Cal <clears throat> continue on his sweet ass motorcycle journey yeah. down to that mm -hmm. question mark, down <clears throat> the special one. You could have stopped at sweet on ass. On my way. <laughs> you move off that, <laughs> <in> that direction. <laughs> Uh, Cal, as you move forwards, you make it to about here, and, uh, actually directly fucking disobeying orders, um, someone, uh, someone jumps off a nearby building and sort of lands next to you. Hey, can I hit your ride? <laughs> I don't know, you going my way? He, uh, he's like, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea, I just... Uh, snuck out. Um, being out here <laughs> doing something is better than uh, uh, not. <laughs> Hell yeah, welcome to the bike. By the way, I found a bike. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> and serendipitously, two helmets. Safety first. <laughs> we support motorcycle safety. <laughs> I might be in shock and mourning, but that isn't enough to make me neglect my physical health. But <laughs> that the looking, both of them looking directly at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Colt graciously takes his motorcycle helmet, puts it on, hops on the bike behind you, and uh, are you headed down to this one? Are you done with Damn your right. Saturday morning special yet? <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right, I forgot we're not live streaming and we don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm just trying to add some levity, man. <laughs> no, man, you're doing great. Great job. Keep it up. We're counting on you to help if anything tries to kill us. I have like two bombs and I'm pretty sure we're going to need those. <clears throat> so you make it over to the question mark and uh, I need you to roll me a 1d1. <laughs> uh, I think I think if I'm remembering. Oh, a 1d1. I see. Yes, it took me a second to register. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do me a massive favor. Just uh, wow, that's incredible. Holy shit, that's it's a, a one! That's incredible. You discover one of some the ones in chat. You. <laughs> yeah, uh, chat, give me some ones, please. Um, <laughs> Colt is gonna hop off the bike and be like, "You want to blow one of your bombs, or should I stab the thing?" Eh, it kind of seems like you could use the vexer, use the body movement. Go for it. <laughs> he. Ducks backwards, leaps, and then drives his, uh, he, he drives, like, a, a fucking kick straight down through the thing. You are at four out of six. Okay. Uh, that's them. Who next, Jackson? Well. Oh, man. It's a well, mess up I can, here. I can walk through the minefield for you if you want. <laughs> that I sounds like it'll be an unpleasant experience for you. I can try and lead some of the demons in there with me if you want. <laughs> I don't want to see you exploded, even if you're immortal. Okay. You want me to walk around? He really, really doesn't mind. <laughs> Cast on the comms, like, immediately patches it next to Argos, like, ah, thank you. I, I think he... I think he forgets sometimes how horrifying it is to see his upper body fly through the sky and leave a rainbow of synthetic blood behind him. 
You did actually make it sound very beautiful just now. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's beauty even in horrifying things. <laughs> they smile. Especially in horrifying things. <laughs> You'd That's be a little... good deal. <laughs> <laughs> you go fight some demons, okay? <laughs> Is that an order? <laughs> it's a recorder. <laughs> it's an order instrument. with Yeah, please. like the instrument? Pass yeah. on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's a request like... unless you don't want to do it, and then it's an order. Yeah, that's a that's a great way of looking at it. It's an Would order like with a please me? in front. Would you like for me to go then? <laughs> I would like for you to start killing demons in this direction. I'm Make currently sure they don't... engaged with two large demons. Would you like for me to abandon this post? <laughs> You've got reinforcements coming your way <laughs> to sweep them up. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's the you know what the fun thing about the road is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basil can go where Basil is. Yes, so, Basil um, can go where Basil is. This this hurt Basil. Yeah. We'll switch with this Basil. Oh, okay. You're gonna attack him. Okay, that one goes over there. You spend that Basil. Uh, Basil, do you spawn another Basil? I will spawn a support Basil. Oh my God. Right here. <laughs> You're gonna spawn a support Basil on Basil. <laughs> oh look. Too many fucking I'm, I'm Basil. <laughs> I'm my own reinforcements. <laughs> Argos was like what? impressed Correct. that that he could tell Basil to like stop fighting a thing and she'd do it. But now that's less impressive because <laughs> somehow you're Cur fighting it even more. <laughs> Charybdis patches in on the comms. Hey, uh, boss. Yo. I'm seeing a lot of weird shit happening behind me right now. You want me to keep protecting them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I need it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just keep yourself safe, too. Watch out for that devious end table. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that thing's been loading its gun. I'm a little scared, to be honest. <laughs> I so can't... I guess this uh, this attack basil can attack the devious yeah. end table if that's what oh, you yeah. would like, right? Oh yes. yeah. So and uh, uh, the support basil will support Charybdis. Lovely. Okay. So here's how this is gonna go. You all are going to engage with the devious end table. Collectively, you all almost kill it. This squad engaging. Um, uh, the devious end table is going to uh, deal damage to Charybdis. Charybdis will go down, but he will start to regenerate, as is as is his gift. He touches down, and he has to beat a certain number. He is being actively supported by the Basil, and uh, he, might, he might need all the help he can get. So, I'm going to roll dice and then provide narration based on what happens. Uh, uh, Brennan, roll me 1d6 for your support Basil on the spot. Okay. And, uh... Oh, bless. Uh, hey, Constant. Holy shit, hello. You wanna you wanna lend us a d6? We're at a 19 right now for- Does uh, somebody Charybdis. need a d6? Okay, we are at a 22. So, uh, Charybdis uh, rushes forward. Uh, arm is held high, shielding for the two basils behind him. The one behind almost leaps off of him and lunges on the end table. But the Glock rolls free and discharges a few rounds in Corruptus's gut. The other basil oh. rolls him over and starts to apply triage as monster. Further mutates the man. Uh, with a 20 plus, he will pick himself back up. <clears throat> Next turn, he can act again. He's at a two as his body starts to regenerate. This squad is tanking them. Okay, who's next? Um, where did you want uh, Ideal to go, Jackson? To the right. Okay. Make sure these things... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ideal will go right here, Ooh. which makes another straight line. So I will engage all three. <laughs> uh, you're gonna You're going to fire on all three of them? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, you pull out your guttural cannon, aim down a line, and start to weaken the demons back there. As 
boom, a shot travels through the city at the base of the Omerian tree. Uh, Basil, fire is returned on you as boom, uh, the tank fires a cannon shot and you, a, a segment of your body is blown out and then starts to regenerate. Uh, Basil, when you recall a Basil to yourself, you add their health total to yours. Oh, yeah. This Basil, come home. Yeah. You're, you're, this one down here, or uh, yep. Okay, uh, you recall this Basil? Uh, she rejoins with you, and plus one. Here you go. <laughs> you uh, so give me some narration on what that looks like. <laughs> so uh, Basil. Uh... <laughs> Why would you open this door? Uh, because I need to see what's inside. <laughs> uh, after taking a, a tank shell, uh, Basil actually just recalls the Basil that she moved over here. Yeah. And um, she kind of lifts up her mask and from the mask reaches out a giant incorporeal black hand, which devours the additional Basil <laughs> and returns her to the fold. <laughs> Can you watch this? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Who next? Okay. I... Um. Sorry, I'm trying to look up what Cam's I Immortal and Invincible. Is. He's Immortal He's and okay. Invincible. He can yeah. he can effectively block an unlimited amount of units for an unlimited amount of time and he will not go down. He does okay. not deal damage. He does not deal damage. Right, okay. <clears throat> uh, I guess, Cam, if you wouldn't mind waltzing over to this question. Oh, you can't. Well, we we solved that, <laughs> didn't we? I can't what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. You you can do anything you set your minds to. Just please try to avoid the minefield. Come on. Okay. Second, chance. Second chance. Second chance. Cast is rubbing their hands together. <laughs> Cam, Cam was definitely, if you had said avoid the mic, but going to walk in a straight line. Um, <laughs> so you have enough movement to make it over there. You take hits from this guy, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> uh, Cam, you are indeed pulverized on the way over, but that's just Tuesday for you. So you make it over here. Sorry, Cam, but flip, you're tough. Flip that 1d2. Let me. Money, big money. Okay, roll a 1d10. Ooh, a one. Okay, okay. Let me double check what a one is. Mm -mm. I love how Argus is like, I'm sorry, Cam. Cam, who literally cannot feel fear when he is in pain because the first water eats that to make him <laughs> suffer less and he's like it's fine <laughs> argos is apologizing to mike who this distresses greatly <laughs> yeah. i would think she's busy <clears throat> i mean yeah <laughs> let me find the event page there we go okay uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God. Hey, Cam. Yeah? I'm changing the music. Oh, God. Uh, Cam, you, uh, you, you move through and you're like, man. Oh, wow, there's, there's something here that looks like a, uh... Yeah, this looks like one of those big fruit. Uh, it's, it's glowing, it's the same color, it's... Huh. This doesn't smell like one of those fruit. Weird. Um... And you get closer and you look at it and you have a <laughs> oh moment as you uh you realize um this is the uh undetonated logic we warhead knew it. we knew it. <laughs> it's a nuke it's a nuke arm a warhead that devastates everything within three fields on a 20 plus set the timer yourself in a number of turns on a 15 plus it detonates at the end of the following turn on a 10 plus it detonates at the end of this turn otherwise it detonates instantly dealing six damage to all those caught within the blast how six 
Yeah. Would Basil and Melly be within three fields? Three fields. Yeah. How big uh, is a field? Yeah. Let me uh, let me make it clear. Um, a field is basically like think of it as an octant of the map. So it's this area is one. Then okay. down. Oh. It's like here. Then tree is two, and it's oh. pretty much up so to this Helena door. This oh, area. The yeah. Fucking map. Uh, yeah, so that's that's half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are two people outside of the blast radius. Yeah. <laughs> Cam, Cam is like, hey Argos. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try my very best, but. Everyone should evacuate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's what the other thing I'll say. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, you do not need to detonate the warhead now. You don't even have to fuck with it. Oh, it's not a, It's not activated. Oh, it's not me. activated. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, I was it's like, oh, I'm about to explode <laughs> and kill but, everyone. <laughs> but imagine. Our, but you could, imagine. Argos, all these demons. Argos, a nuclear warhead is good news. Argos, I found a, 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 a nuke, and it's not active, but I can activate it if you want me to pick it up. No, that's fine. <laughs> like, I can walk it over to the tree if you get everyone to teleport far enough away, and we can just blow this thing up. Argos, give, give me one turn. One turn, and I will handle evacuations. <laughs> Cast, uh, Cast actually chimes in on the comms is like, wait, hold on. And then over here, hold on. <clears throat> Verona actually chimes in. She's like, ah, hey everyone. Um, Okay, so I see you found a nuke. First of all, uh, good job, I guess. Second of all, Thank um, you. even if you detonate it now and uh, burn down the tree, it will still simply regenerate unless all of those fruit have been cut. Uh, She's walking back and forth, and she's like, "I, I need to go." Um, uh, apparently Willow almost blew her arm off again, so I've got to bring her a spare. Uh, <laughs> That's still her. <laughs> you, you guys have, you guys have this, right? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, good luck. Be careful with the nuke. I, 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 I trust you with it, Argos. <laughs> I'm not gonna bring the nuke near anyone. I, 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 also, I just wanted to no, tell no. him that it was an option. I, I, I trust. I trust you with the nuke too, Cam. That I, 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 later. <laughs> Door slams. Gene likes. Oh wow! Would you look at that? <clears throat> she must trust us a lot. We've got nuclear weapons privileges. <laughs> mm. If we can find the remaining seeds, I think we can handle this pretty quickly. Yeah, I'll hold it here, um, and whenever you, cause like, I'm gonna be real, if I move it from here, it's gonna blow up our base, so I'm gonna keep it here, and I can just wait here if you want, or you can station someone else here and I can go do something else, there's just a nuke here, and if <laughs> that person blows it up and doesn't get to the Helena door fast enough, they will die. <laughs> <laughs> Suggestion. Yes. We can stop focusing on fighting the individual enemies now and focus on finding the seeds. As long as we keep them away from the forward base. Uh, right. You can, because, like, if you have them back up to this door down here, they can just hold the line here until we're ready to detonate the bomb, go through the door up here, here, and then everything here will blow up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, okay. It's good to have it as an option, you know? <laughs> I mean, I could also, if you wanted, take this up to the surface, if they're having more problems up there. Yes, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm trying to be helpful, but no. Yeah, I didn't think that was as good of an idea. <laughs> Just a thought, I was tasked with making sure that nobody else dies. So, the faster we do this, the easier that job will be. I want oh. you to know, Argos, Helena is looking directly at you and she's like, I'm gonna be real with you. You see this, this door on the map here? Mm -hmm. My base is there. Uh, I won't be super devastated if you blow it up, but I'll be like a little peeved. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that little 
peevedness into consideration. <laughs> uh, Theo also. Oh, literally, you hear her louder than everyone else because she's literally yelling into your face right now. <laughs> she's like, also, if anyone is only able to make it over to a... Uh, if anyone is at risk of being exploded but is over by a door, I can walk through the door and shield them from the nuke. Uh, but you it'll... would... You still take damage, Theo. I rescind my suggestion. <laughs> Again, thanks for trying to be helpful. But we're going to go with another option. Damn, he put you Should in I also chime in about how I can also explode? Oh my so God. We're all three? Everyone stop trying to sacrifice themselves in a fiery explosion, okay? Yeah, I'm not trying to sacrifice myself. I will live. Don't, uh, don't fucking bring that thing near me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like I'm planning to just activate it and stand here. I would run to the door. It's just a matter of how good I am at activating it if I make it to the door or not. Yo, boss, I'd live. Just, just put that out there. I wanted to say on my record, I'd live. <laughs> okay, Valentine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I would like you to make. You're a fast mover. Yeah. So I hear, for my intel. I'd like you to break away from the fight and go through this door. Can do. You want me to stab anyone on the way out? No. Okay. He uh he turns, sheaths his sword, and just starts running. And uh, he's still got movement left. Where do you want to put him? Want him to come out here. Ooh. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll uh I'll, I'll pick the camera. Mark I didn't see. <laughs> Good eye. He makes his way down here. Runs out. Uh, runs over here. Valentine will flip a coin. He gets an event. Second nuke. <laughs> <laughs> hey boss, uh, I, d I didn't find anything. Just ignore me. <laughs> he, um, he, uh, on the comms. Ooh. Oh, this is a good one. I thought he was going to ignore me because he had found a second nuke and he was just going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> Barely functional fang. You discover a backup tower from the Court of Logic. This machine hisses worryingly while crackling with blue energy. On the 25 plus, gain forbidden knowledge and command two demons as if they were your troops this turn. On a 20 plus, command one demon as if they were your troop this turn. Otherwise, the machine breaks. Hey, I found like a supercomputer or something. Compulsion used to mess with these things. You want something from it? Oh, hell yeah. We're gonna use that. Oh boy, Valentine. Go for it, Valentine. <laughs> Valentine Go. can actually roll pretty good on this. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Let's get this. Okay, you gain forbidden knowledge as Valentine's like, oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. He, uh, he starts to, like, laugh as he starts typing away at the computer. He's like, Ugh, it's actually really similar to the computers from my world. Okay, um, tell me which two demons you want. Uh, let's go with these two. These two? Okay. Okay. They are in the Look. blast radius <laughs> and far away from Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be a strategist or anything, but I'm kind of playing a similar game to you. <laughs> these two? Hmm? Uh, these two demons? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Lovely. Okay. They, uh, they become pacified. What do you order them to do? I'd like them to go over and engage with someone over here. Oh, uh... Just... That's excellent, actually, because uh, this one has been weakened by a Basilisk Ideal. These two just run over and wipe each other out. This guy moves his way over to the tank and is wiped out. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, damn. That's, uh, that's really efficient. Good job, the, um... new guy. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, just call me the temp, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's harder if I fight. Um, and uh, over here. <clears throat> Argos, I need input. <laughs> List coming onto your comms. Oh, don't worry, I'm not busy. I'll yes. Uh, do you need me here? Here? 
here or up there, up above. I need do you, you up above. In... Okay. <laughs> so, she dips. <laughs> Jackson with the thank God under his breath. <laughs> List is gonna do list things. Okay. Uh, unordered units, Melly. Yeah, that's it, right? Yep. Um. Da, 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 da. Okay. Melly? Yeah. I need you to go through this door right below you. Right okay. South, and come out the door that's even more south of that. This one? Yep. And then and then head to the point. Head to the point. You got it. <laughs> she walks her way over. She's like, it's less glorious than Charybdis, but uh I mean it's a job still worth doing. It's a job still worth doing. It's a job still worth doing. I found one! <laughs> her eyes <laughs> light up and she's like <clears throat> Okay, that's that's another fruit for Melly. She's <laughs> to break this thing. <laughs> that means that the one over by Cal and Colt has to be the last one, right? Yep. Guaranteed. Unless someone tries to throw a wrench into the works, but that would be. Who would do? Who would do? That would be pretty messed That'd up. Be <laughs> so yes, guaranteed. The final one is right there. They will be able to get to it on their next turn. Um, and with that, this turn comes to a close. Meanwhile, Are we going to surface now? Uh, no, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop over to inside the derelict. Pog. As. Argos. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Helena establishes a door actually on the upper floors. You've made it a majority of the way through the derelict at this point. The queen is just up ahead, but you've made basically a forward base. Nectar's like, okay, if we're talking about this location, should be pretty safe. Most of the demons yeah. have been cleared out. They're either fighting on the outside or have already been dealt with by your little strike team. She, um, she's like, as far as this floor goes, I've got a warning because this is the most dangerous floor in the entire derelict. Okay. All right. Oh, she's right. Yeah, you need to be really careful. Uh, okay. So down there? Down that's there? Our th that's our meeting room. Uh, that room's fine. Use it for whatever you want. Don't wreck the place. If you fuck up the tables, I'll kill you. Uh, <laughs> here's the bar. Don't steal any of my or Theo's wine. We need that. God, we're gonna need that after this, too. Um... But if you need, like, water or something, feel free to refresh. Second of all, that room back there. Actually, that wait, no, 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 that, that, that this room. <laughs> that one. Okay. Don't go in there, okay? No matter what, don't, don't do it. Okay. Is that your lab? No, that's the kitchen. If you go in there, you're uh, dead. Stefano will find you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's uh, super dangerous. I've only been in once, I've snuck in once or twice, and yeah, there's, coming back from that takes years. <laughs> Doing it in a wartime scenario, extremely dangerous. <laughs> is, is that the reason that this floor is the most dangerous? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, you just don't want to aggro him, because, like, even though, like, we're invading and stuff, he's still going to be super polite. He's not going to, he's not going to be polite. That's how you get an actual enemy. Yeah. Is there anything else important on the floor? No, nah, it's good. Use it as a base otherwise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, I probably shouldn't go too much further. It will, uh, because if I get caught or go down at that point, all of the stuff we have set up through me is useless and we're getting right. kind of close to the queen. So at this point, this is like the safest place for me to sit uh, unless you order me to move. That sounds good. We can use this as like a navigation hub as well, like, you know. Uh, yeah, and be ready to duck through your door if anything comes after you. Yep, I'll be sitting right here, she says. She sits down. If Not you need action. anything, I can I can uh, pop in, or you can come back here and I can grab it from pretty much anywhere else that a door is. Great. Uh, I'll stay in contact. Nectar pauses. She's like, 
I'll catch up with you guys. The your new uh intern, I guess, just sent me some fascinating data from that thing he found in the middle of nowhere. I think there's something that I can do uh do in here to make things a little bit easier for everyone. She turns over and looks at Fio and Argos. You too good to progress on your own? Oh yes. <laughs> Fio's yeah. expression lights up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh you stay safe too, Nectar. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna trust me, I'm going through the crawl spaces and stuff. Nobody's finding me. <laughs> <laughs> she like lightly waves, she's like, Good job so far, keep it up, tactician. And <laughs> slides away into the distance. Fio turns over and looks at you and is like, Well, the final floors up ahead are the ones that technically belong to me. Though they don't anymore. So you should know your way around them. She does. Well, like anything to look out for? Any kitchens to not tread <laughs> upon? Uh no, because you've already been in my room, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Don't go in Stefano's room. That's the other thing. Uh, where's Stefano's room? Uh, it's down at the end of the hallway there. It's less dire than the kitchen. He'll just get really embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I kind of just, like, set up a side objective. In my brain, but... No. I must resist. She, uh, Fio turns and, like, starts to walk, and she's like, <clears throat> as far as, um, the Golden Knight goes, if we run into him, it shouldn't be too bad. She, uh, she, like, waves her arms as she walks. The pyromancers are, for the most part, uh, assigned to a court numerically increasing based on roughly what the queen estimates as their potential. As a result, I'm the fifth court. Which means I'm second strongest. <laughs> <laughs> you see the sparkles emitting from Theo. And... Okay. But the Golden Knight taking over your position, doesn't that mean that he'd be in your the areas that used to be yours? Yeah, so we're going to try to sneak past him, and if we find him, uh, I'll swat him. Like a gnat. <laughs> Elena from the other side of the room, like, if you guys kick his ass, you can bring him here and I'll keep him, like, <laughs> here, I guess. Hold him. <laughs> if he knows what's good for him, he will let us pass, though. <laughs> I like the confidence. All right. <laughs> uh, the other side of things. She actually stops. Hmm. And, like, looks at you directly. Uh, there is a uh, risk beyond that, though. Mm, I mean, I'm sort of, like, the second strongest, but that naturally means there's a guy past me. <clears throat> who, who would that be? She sort of scratches at the side of her head, and she's like, uh, this is kind of awkward to ask, seeing as how he's a very important person to me, but... Mm. Do you think the two of us together could take down Isaac? Isaac is someone I don't know a lot about. Mm. It'd be better if we don't have to take him down at all. But Her mouth opens. Huh. You're right. <laughs> and she, she her, her wings fluff up she's like sorry I guess I jumped to the violent option huh I mean this is like a huge battle mm. slash war so but mm. I mean we're trying to build a bridge between mm. between us humans flame touched and demons and you know yeah so maybe we can talk yeah or even if we can't um there's no guarantee it has to come to like bloodshed and death right like we right. could lightly I, I could distract him and you could hit him on the head and knock him out yeah 
Okay, I'm I'm liking this. She uh she walks forward and oh man, Argus, you if gotta you tap the key instead of holding it. It's non-lethal. <laughs> Argos, you you look over. I love I love that. Uh, building off the back of that joke, I get to immediately uh, uh, be like, "Oh yeah, Fio's dead." <laughs> as far as she knows, you guys got the signal earlier that uh, uh, the pyromancer of death, Vinter, uh, recently uh, perished in the conflict. Right. And uh, yeah, uh, she is she's playing she- it off like it's nothing. However, <laughs> however, you definitely get the sense where she's like, "Well." Better ask Argos just in case we gotta fucking kill Isaac. <laughs> and then you're like, whoa, 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 wait. And she's like, right. Not everything is terrible. <laughs> just compartmentalize it for now and we'll cry later. <laughs> you. Are you getting ready to ice her older brother figure? Like, guess feel... it's like this. <laughs> I guess it's the way it's gotta be. Uh, the two of you walk into the distance as over here. (laughs) Down here, all of you are, wait, you're not, you're not here. Rio, Rio, where the fuck? There. Okay. You all, beat to fuck, are taking a hot second. You remember the words that Vinter parted with. After convincing him to go about this entire business, the man did offer you a few pieces of pretty good advice. First of all, prepare yourselves. Um, I don't know about the Golden Knight's full potential, but as far as Isaac goes, I think comparatively he's a bigger monster than even I am. Second, the second this happens, attitudes in the derelict are going to shift rapidly. I can't predict exactly how Compulsion will act, but for the rest of them, they're going to be looking for something anything. Whether it's something for themselves, a chance to grasp at maybe whatever future they can secure, or if it's just raw fear. My absence will create an opening. Don't let the pain of my family go to waste. I'm not asking you to soothe their burdens. That would be cruel given what we're about to do, but simultaneously, I ask at the very least that we do not cause them suffering with no meaning. (sighs) Finally, when it comes to the queen herself, he struggled with the wording of this. I think you will understand given time, but she is a monster of our creation a ghost of our weakness. She is, to some extent, all of the areas where we pyromancers failed. And the man disappeared. You now sit, waiting for medical evac as you feel someone walk Yeah, Trouble is doing, over. like, first, like, simple first aid. She's, like, casting low-level yeah. healing. But, like, not that intense. She can't heal wounds. She can't do anything like that. So she's just, like, mostly alleviating your fatigue. Yeah. Seagazer's are sitting there. Uh, Willow. You look, you, you look down at your arm. Uh, okay. So... There are areas where I can only describe this as, like, uh... It's very similar to, like, magma bursting from inside something, or a piston that's been overheated. Your body is mechanical, and now you're acutely aware of that fact. Most of the time, you almost forget that you're inside a machine. But right now, you can stare clear through the side of your arm. You see your flame held rigid in place, almost blossoming and leaking from the cracks that you bore straight through it. Most of your fingers have disintegrated, uh, but your thumb still remains. 
your arm is fucked. It's actually really impressive, although I'm in an older model simulacrum. The simulacrum you have and the simulacrum all the AI are in have things like artificial blood and other things to make it so that when you're damaged, the first thing that leaks out isn't flame. If you cut my arm off, flame just comes out and I actually die much more rapidly than the others would. This is an older model. What you have here, she sort of holds her hand out and like very gently takes what's left of your hand and she's like, you see how your flame is almost still creating the image of a finger where there aren't any? Yeah, I'm looking at it. That's not what normally happens. <laughs> Normally this would just be a stump, like anyone else losing fingers would be. Oh, so you're telling me even when I'm beat up, I'm built different. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say you will likely survive the end of the world. Your flame will simply sit there in the shape that you were in when your body was destroyed and sit there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when you said it like that, it sounded cool, but now that I realize that my body's gonna stick around, that's gonna hurt. That's... <laughs> yeah, it's going to be extremely painful. Yeah, that's horrifying, to be yeah, honest. It must be nice. Will, look at this. It just shows the hole in his real-ass body's chest. St Whoa, hey. what happened? Yep, stop. I'm... <laughs> See, I'm in there. My, maybe, that I'm... Don't, you needed my help. <laughs> don't... Don't look too... Listen, don't look too close at what I filled him up with. What, wait, okay? You filled him with stuff? Yeah, he's missing most of his flame and most of his organs. He needs things that do those jobs. Unfortunately, you only have a... T your triangle is missing a side. I had to introduce them somehow, a third side. Introduce is a hell of a word for it. <laughs> what did you want me to do? Anything, uh, uh, something else, I don't know. You're... Wait, you're like... you made the hole in his chest? I might have stabbed my arm through Ace's chest. Yeah, <laughs> that definitely did happen, and she pulled me out from it. <laughs> so you put the hole in his chest. She points it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you filled it up with some some gunk. I. It's not. It's not gunk. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I don't but... know what it is. What is that stuff? It's, 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 <laughs> it's so much. Listen, it's so much better. It's so much better than the gunk. It's he's full of parasites. That sounds worse. It's so much better. We the will get him medical like... treatment when we get back to Opia. Everyone <laughs> stop. <laughs> uh, by the way, Willow, this is Sea Gazer. Uh, oh. Uh, Oh, oh, sorry. I, I, yeah, I she stops. Yelling at you. <laughs> because they're like, it's it's fine. I was also kind of getting fired up there. She holds her hand out and she's like, it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm a massive fan of your work. Oh, thank you. I, I heard a lot about you. <laughs> she, uh, weird request. Could I shake the? She like looks down at your like disintegrated hand. My my fire hand? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Nice, hard I hope it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> she shakes it as Seagazer, like, Seagazer wraps her hand around it and shakes it once, and she's like, uh, uh, she, like, looks at the room and everyone here and is like, it's a pleasure to be here, actually, physically. It's nice to be in person. Normally, I was just sitting here watching your antics. Oh. Oh, you know what? I do have something to ask you. Yeah. Do you know about the the thing? Hmm? Uh, you're uh, a reflection rat. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, she... Do you know about the what? <clears throat> oh. Here we go. The what? Like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> the, the thing. The thing. The thing. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Which <Gazer>. thing? <laughs> Sea Gazer, like, uh, sort of, like, stops, looks over. She's like, right, you're, uh, <clears throat> you're a Grasp's partner. Yeah. He told me, uh, some, some things that I needed to know. Oh. Oh, right, you're one of the, you're one of the two-timers. You're also partnered up with, um, oh. Keyhole. She, yeah. The guy in the cell next to mine. Oh, was he a nice cellmate? Uh, yeah, I guess. We, like, talk sometimes. She, uh, she folds her arms and, like, she leans back. She's like, I'm familiar at the very least that they wanted something from you. What? They want to break out or something? Uh, basically, not just <laughs> them, but everybody. 
Trouble gets a wicked fucking look on her face, <laughs> and she's like, well, "Great." Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. She actually pauses. She's like, "I gotta say, your reflections are kind of ballsy. Like, actually built different." <laughs> <laughs> You're one to talk. Yeah, it's just I don't know where to punch. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Usually the, the problem just walks at me. Sigizer, <laughs> well. Sigizer heard what you said and floats over here. <laughs> Fucking <Yeah>. insufferable. <laughs> well, it seems like your reflections want to break everyone out, right? Yeah, basically. Well, did you see what I just did with Sigizer? Wait, I gotta put holes in people's chests? No, 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 no. You gotta kiss them. them. <laughs> we only need to do that to Ace because he was missing like, an element. I can do it to normal people without that. <laughs> okay, so no kissing. We ain't kissing I mean, kiss nobody. I mean, you can kiss if you want, Willow. Willow, grow up. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, don't hold up, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> She, she like looks over and she's like, I can give you guys the basic rundown on what happened to me. If you're looking, if your goal, if their goal is really to free all of them in general, it's going to take not only a lot of work, it's going to take a lot more damage than I dealt to that place. You're going to need a plan, resources. Uh, you're going to probably need to go room. over in person. You're going to need to shove destruction in a locker. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> so this crazy is how be the all three of us rest. crazy how all three of us ended up here and seemingly had independently the same plan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my only plan was to break myself out. Uh I can pass along whatever information I know, but I kinda wanna make one thing clear. Seagazer touches down and she draws herself up to her full height and she's like, the big goal, uh, my big goal in general is I she like looks away. I want to live. Like I want to live. Like more than anything else, I just want to. Uh, God, this is embarrassing to say uh, with my own mouth. <clears throat> I, I want to be able to enjoy life in the burning world. <laughs> sort of mutters off to the side. <laughs> she, uh, she sort of like taps her foot on the ground and she's like. <clears throat> I've been watching for a while, and at the very least, I I know I know things are better over here than they were where I come from. Like by a wide, wide margin. Things are miserable back over there. So at the very least, I wanna sort of I don't know. Enjoy what's happening here. Doing it through Ace and via Ace. Also, yeah, lie down. That'll let the parasite spread further. <laughs> <laughs> she right leaves. In front of me. <laughs> hey, listen, they're helpful, I swear. Um I just wanna I don't know. It was like one time you guys got like a pizza, that seemed nice. <laughs> it wasn't that great. <laughs> it was amazing, what you talking about? So, if you want assistance in, like, helping all the reflections, yeah, sure, I'm cool with that. But, uh, let's just say I'm corrupt and the price of my bribes is, um... Uh... Parasites? She, not, not parasites. No, so, like, I'm giving you, you those for get... free. So you're asking about going to karaoke or having a party? I mean, karaoke seems a little audacious, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see you sing at karaoke. I'll, starting small, like get me a coffee or something. Are coffees well, good? Coffees <laughs> are good. Okay. They can be okay. a acquired taste though. You might need to drink different types. Yeah, I heard they're bitter, but like, I don't know. I think I'll probably like them. <laughs> I think coffee's the last ever, thing you Have you need. ever eaten some, have you ever eaten something before? Uh, no. You might, be shocked by flavors and how different they are. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that those things exist. <laughs> you look over at Seagazer standing in the corner. She's... 
I don't know how to put this. Visibly surly, shoulders arced up. Her tail is lashing the entire time back and forth. Like visible excitement in her body language. She's like, yeah, so uh, if you do that for me, you got yourself a deal. Oh, I mean, yeah, easiest deal of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Willow has this thing called a credit card. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, see, yeah, Gazer, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see this credit card thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then from around the building, a presence sort of like looms, and she's like, "Oh, oh, Willow, you managed to get yourself one of those." Yep, speaking, it's... <laughs> speaking of coffee. <laughs> Gifted to me by Opia. I'm happy to see, I'm happy to see that Opia is earning more money than uh, we were back in the station one days. So, ah, I have a little bit of business to attend to. Uh huh. I need to disentangle myself from a certain spreadsheet. What? Uh -huh. No, the spreadsheet's so nice. The spreadsheet. If if is, you hurt the spreadsheet, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not. She's like, I'm not going to hurt the spreadsheet. The last thing I want is to go to war over my name being entered on the Court of Death's roster. I oh, just... are you scared of dying alone and afraid? Uh, yes. <laughs> <I see. laughs> she, like, looks over at you, Willow, and is like, if it's all right with you, I'll say my goodbyes for now, and... If you need me, I'll be on the fang of the court of death. Tell the spreadsheet I said hi. <laughs> she she nods and like looks down at you, Willow, and is like, "It was nice to reconnect after so long. Don't die fighting eternity or whatever." You know I can't die. Based on what I overheard from that conversation, that does sound categorically correct. But if there's <laughs> anyone that can ward off a ghost, it's that guy. Genuinely, it'd be a massive waste of your potential if you died here. Plus, you haven't even gotten me out of the coda yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, we gotta bring each other out of the coda, right? <laughs> you say that to her and she's like... Okay, I'm not making a promise I can't keep this time. Sure, if I catch you slipping, I'll grab you. <laughs> <laughs> and Rio... You you feel something like you feel a connection between uh, her via your ESP and trouble. You actually hear it extremely clearly from Rio. Uh, it's such a funny sensation from this person out in front of you. This is someone who was fighting on the side of the demon, so wrapped and set in her own hatred that now, in this moment, in this moment alone, as she walks away and starts to wave, she is deciding even the smallest amount to hope again. And she she leaves with that as you look over at Willow, seeing that line ignite between the two of them and realizing that Willow gave that back to her. Who the hell was smiles. that? <laughs> oh, that's the current stranger of the Court of Death. And also, before you think I was threatening her, uh, dying alone and afraid is the entry that the spreadsheet makes when your soul is claimed by the pyromancer or stranger of death. <laughs> I thought you were just calling her ugly. No, it's like a, it's like a. She just swats her hand like no, it's like a joke. <laughs> oh. She was the uh, she was the superstar of Station One days. Seagazer, like, moves her way over into the corner, and she's like, huh. Were things, like, really different back then? Because, like, she, yeah. like, looks she looks over at you. We were dirt really? poor. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So this was the age before credit cards. Yeah, we basically, we, we had canned meat, canned vegetables. We fought with really shitty weapons. No one really believed in us, and a lot of us were dying in droves. It was really bad. <laughs> yeah, most of Wave 1, uh, you know how Wave 1 is like three people? It's like Twice, Ascalon, Lug. Those are the only survivors of Station 1, and it's why technically Willow and Ruth are members of Wave 1, even though they're Wave 2. Sigurds so are sort of like stops and turns over, and it's like, huh. Hey, Ace. Yeah? Is Opie still like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. We'll <laughs> find out. It's just like I don't know. I saw you. I saw you stuffing your face at the buffet sometimes. Was that canned food? No. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, Ace just puts his hand on Seagazer's shoulder. There's some mysteries of life I don't want to spoil to you. <laughs> yeah, you gotta figure that one out yourself, dear. You gotta figure it out yourself. <laughs> Seagazer thinks to herself on her various experiences. Watching via Ace? Ace, at any given opportunity, taking all of the free food that he can and the plates and plates of food that Willow made, and she comes to a very wrong conclusion in this moment. They were stuffing themselves so much, they must have been miserable. <laughs> <laughs> they were eating so much to get as much energy as possible. They were getting as much energy as possible. <laughs> Man, maybe things over here aren't so different. <laughs> And with that, I'm putting us to BRB for our very first break. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, everybody, refresh, get drinks, etc. Hello, chat. I love that they just all got beat to shit. And so they're sitting there literally waiting for Verona to come give them medical triage. Hello, like, chat. Sitting in the trenches, waiting for the medics to arrive, holding their wounds like, haha, lol. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How's it going, chat? Yeah, here's the question for the YouTube. What food would you give Seagazer? There you go. Oh, I was gonna suggest what superpower have you secretly tried out when you thought no one was looking? That's also a good one. Dude, I, I want Seagazer to eat those fucking strip club chicken wings that everyone hypes up all the time. You know, like, like, Half of Opia loves those strip club chicken wings from the strip club next to Ace's house, you know? Yeah. And like, Riddle doesn't know that it's a strip club, so she's taken everyone there and everyone really likes them. I think she should try them. I bet she'd mm -hmm. like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam wants her to try the first water because he's like, I had a great experience with it. Everyone like Cam, no. <laughs> no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Someone buy this woman a biggie bag. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. It's wild. I'm back. Whoa, he's back. Okay, let me prep up the next sections. Lovely, lovely. Judge Witch says, also like, everyone's tried to do telekinesis at least once, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, try? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mask, bravo, I threw you into the deep end as anticipated. Mask had no idea that that's how the, uh, the session was going to open. Please clap for him. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no fucking like, clue. Please. I just threw him in deep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, it's Cal. Cal's always Cal. I love how you like, please clap for Mask after you yeah. just fucking like set up Isaac with the dopest fucking... <laughs> Oh dang, Isaac's so good. I love that, him so much. That that man has to watch his sugar intake. <laughs> Bad, we're gonna have to kill him. <laughs> He's diabetic. He's no 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 pre diabetic pre diabetic. It's different. It's different. <laughs> Do you know like has to like a lot of a lot of people diet. are like this. It's fine. It's, this guy's it's been just... this guy's been pre diabetic for thousands of years. Yeah, that's how good my routine is. <laughs> God, fuck <laughs> off. <You're> good. <laughs> I, I like him. I said, I've got it under control. Imagine you get stopped in time during your midlife crisis and it lasts forever. <laughs> God, no wonder everybody the man else goes talks out about the lake. Everybody else talks about the horrors and all that, but nobody had to work for the company that I worked for. <laughs> I mean, um, I'll be back. Looks at Geist. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Admittedly, you guys got it kind of bad. <laughs> God, I love Isaac so much! <laughs> Isaac, like... I love it because Isaac has repeatedly during this series looked at Argos and been like, it's just, I feel like a sad kinship with you specifically. And I don't know why. And the more time goes on, I'm like, right. These are the two people it's that have like normal lives. <laughs> it's the fucking Gressel. <laughs> at least he got the mini fridge. Not any fucking more. <laughs> God. I mean, do do you want another? Do you want a mini fridge? Is that will that help this situation? If we, Opie has got mini fridges. <laughs> <laughs> We've even got normal fridges. Whoa! Dare to dream, my friend. <laughs> CEO worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody getting get y'all remember to get hydrated. Oh yeah. It was very bold of you to put me in at the beginning because now I'm like, ah, oh, my scene is over. Well, time for bed. <laughs> Mentally, <laughs> I'm just like, God damn it, the EPs. <laughs> no, you're still on a motorcycle. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember going. You're on a motorcycle and you get EP. Pull over and and Adjust. don't die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Take micro sleeps. Micro sleeps. I'm that everyone's favorite reflection character, micro nap. <laughs> micro nap. If you Dude, experience Mike nap. <laughs> My social battery has been running on zero for so fucking long, guys. I need to be alone. <laughs> oh. On the throne. I need to listen. If if the queen walks over here and tells me to move off of the throne, I'm gonna get really cranky. <laughs> We're finally gonna see Mike snap, and it's just because she hasn't had a nap today. We have finally pushed her too far. She's fucking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just bad. pushed her too far. <laughs> Dangers of Mike not getting enough sleep or alone time. <laughs> okay. I love Willow being like, oh my god, we need to kiss people? And then <laughs> yeah. tell them like, I mean, no, I had to do that to Ace because he's a freak. And then and then Willow asking again and she'll be like, I mean... We can kiss if you really want to, Coral's hair. <laughs> I fucking Seagazer and Ace simultaneously, Ace going, grow up, and Seagazer like, hold up. And then uh, her realizing Ace said grow up and going, yeah, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seagazer, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Double checking all of my prepped stuff. I love these this this squad, the bot really squad. Good. They're so <laughs> silly. They bring such an energy to the group call. They do. <laughs> they really do. Okay. Okay, I'm rearranging things slightly, but mostly I'm doing good. Um <clears throat> that'll go like that. Okay, in order, just so everybody everybody's mentally prepared themselves and they're properly locked in, we're gonna do a um uh, a quick uh, intro scene. Then after the intro scene, we're going to do Basil. Then after Basil, we are going to do uh, Verona catching up with you guys uh, to just the squad uh, in Vinter's cool. domain. Then after that. Jackson and Brynn, it's time to lock in. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, in that case, uh, do I have Brennan? Brennan! Oh my yep, god, yep, you must yep. be hiding. Lovely. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> in that case, I'll move us on.
<clears throat> on the roof. <clears throat> There's a snap of his fingers as ESP ignites through the area. Isaac focuses his energy. First, it starts at the tips of his fingers, then it moves backwards to his wrist, then to his upper arm, locking in his elbow, and it spreads through his entire body. And then the actual ESP activates, something from the depths of his gut that radiates outwards, a raging torrent of flame, something that he gained that day, stored within the body, and almost thrown out and free, an act not uh, dissimilar to throwing up. The ESP spreads through the area, and in that torrent, he takes control of only a small part of it, redirecting it for his own purposes. At the start of this turn, Riddle and Seder both make their move, <clears throat> and... Riddle sort of sets herself looking over at Isaac. She watches the man's body change. Something's wrong with this. Colloquially known as the First Esper, the man's attitude doesn't exactly match what she expects from someone who wields ESP. As her artificial eye almost cocks and seems to focus in, Seder cuts in front of Riddle as he yells over his shoulder, Hey Riddle! Support me, okay? Riddle pauses, uh, opening her mouth for a split second. The man shuts forward, summoning a sword from nothing, and I reveal... Satyr's Gifts. Feast and Famine. At the start of each of his turns, he can mark himself with Feast or Famine, which are his dual swords. Uh, one of his swords springs to life in front of him. Pulling it free from the nothing, he swings in on Isaac, and as he goes pop the sword, causing it to shatter in his arms. As Isaac raises one arm, a layer of ESP forming out in front of him. The attack breaks in the air, the sword disintegrating itself down to nothingness. Every individual shard seems to pause as Riddle, almost intuitively realizing what's happening, takes a step backwards, positions herself here, and does indeed move into focus. She will start to build up ESP around her as energy starts to cascade around her body. Isaac raises one hand, and I reveal this. <clears throat> Sifling. You may tag up to six additional props when you, may, uh, when you tag a prop. If you tag more than one, you must roll individual attacks for every prop tagged as you fling them at your target. If used more than once per act, becomes Psy Tornado, creating a nexus of all tag props. The world's greatest telekineticists reaches his hand backwards, picks up this, these two donuts, a segment of this pipe, and Seder's broken sword for a grand total of five props. The man reels his arm back and flings each of them. Seder. <clears throat> finds himself. Seder finds himself caught in a maelstrom of different tossed weaponry. As thunk, one of the donuts back, back here whacks him in the head. He rolls, picks an arm up as Riddle blows one of her barriers to cause one to almost ping off of the air, becoming dismantled as he leaps, tucks his legs in, rolls to the side as the sheet of metal, clang, drives him to the ground. And then Isaac's eyes light up as Seder positioning himself there, feels the weight growing on the outside of his body. Seder must roll to do versus a 30, or experience the crush. Uh, <clears throat> Isaac 
managing uh, to maneuver Seder to the exact position he needed him. Uh, almost sighs. The look that crosses his face is most clearly... What is that? Disappointment? Despite getting his opponent exactly where he needed him, an outcome like this is just so... Seder's body rises into the air, and his bones begin to crack as Isaac uses his ability to crush Seder in place. The way this works is very simple. You roll to do versus a 30. If you don't beat it, you are stunned and wounded. You repeat this roll until you succeed or are crushed into nothingness. Riddle watches as Seder rises into the air. And a sickening feeling almost spreads through her body. It was the moment that Seder took the first move forwards. She could tell something was going to happen. At the very least, it was some buried impulse or maybe something exists uh, that exists beyond the veil. Regardless of what move the man made, this conclusion was inevitable. She snaps her fingers and discharges another blast of her own ESP. Seder's cut free from his strings, dropping to the ground and picking himself back up. He takes the next motion, his body arcing forwards, now blood streaming from his eyes and nose, as Riddle opens her mouth to say something, but lacks the words or the, uh, the impulse to say it correctly. This time, as he drives himself forwards, Isaac simply raises one palm and is going to transparently <clears throat> use side push it is simply uh he shoves satyr backwards with a burst of energy satyr moves his way in ducks whatever the invisible attack is an impressive motion and with a look of glee crossing his face, spins around, wheeling his sword at the back of Isaac's head. Isaac sighs again, and Riddle seems to pause. She wants to say it out loud. It's gonna happen again. There's no way around. Whether it's her brain as a strategist or something else, there is no way out of this situation that doesn't result. Sater feels his body bind inwards. In his untimely demise, crack! The bones start to bear and bury inwards as the greatest esper crushes the man be behind him. Isaac sighs and looks out over the battlefield, waiting for the next thing to happen. Regardless, the tremendous power that he's been granted in this moment could only come to one end. The obliteration of his enemies and the death of those weaker than himself on logic's floor a door cracks open as verona picks herself up she gets herself set um and uh sort of adjusts herself and starts to walk into the uh depths of the derelict <laughs> what am i doing this is now more like uh, this. Perfect. Okay. Mm. She sees the meat tree as it was reported. Double checks it against. Uh, double checks it against her. Uh, uh, the imaging she saw before and is like, okay. Larger now. I am leaving that to Stein and to Basilisk. Id. She sweeps her way over the uh, the bookshelf, touches down and starts to walk through the uh, willow-shaped hole in the wall, leading to the hidden floor behind this floor. Her patients are over in that direction. But over here, in the depths of the meat tree, we catch up with Bezel Skid. I love the meat <laughs> dimension. God, we love the meat room. Holy shit, do we love the meat room? Hold on, I need a, I need a, I need a more upsetting song here. Okay. So, for context, for all of our lovely viewers at home, the outcome 
of what happens to Basil in this space, naturally, well, it can go a wide variety of different directions. To some extent, you could say that the future of Basilisk Id, Basilisk Ideal, and all the others hangs in the balance of how this goes. As a result, I ask you to gird yourselves for what may, whatever may happen coming up. <laughs> Basil. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's no fear in my heart. There is no fear in your heart. If there was fear in your heart, this person would be reflecting it right now. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't look very scared, does he? No, he looks fine. He looks totally fine. <laughs> Actually, in a way, being here is kind of nice. I'm, like, disconnected. It's letting me get in touch with the me that is separate from all the other me's. It's like a break. The you that is allowed to exist outside, outside, outside. The one that is allowed to exist outside of interference. Right? Outside. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Yet we are inside. The are figure we? looks up and around and you feel something almost writhing through the darkness. What you traveled through to make it to this section, this area, was almost like a deep swamp. And uh, now that you're up on land, you can tell that something is disturbing the waters, roiling in the depths. And then the swamp becomes still again. How long does it feel like I've been here? You're asking for your sense of time. Okay, uh, give me a roll to do. Whatever, whatever you've got locked in. <laughs> Just give it a go. Okay. Um, uh, with a 15, you'll get the, you will at the very least get a partial success here in that you recognize your sense of time. Should have registered. It's been about like, oh God, don't quote me on the time scale uh, based on how long the fights have been going, but I'm going to all, say- All I want to all I yeah. want to know is, yeah. does it feel like I've been here longer than it's been in real life? <laughs> yes, because again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to a number and everybody could call me stupid when you look at how long the Vinter fight was. Um, yeah. You know you should have been in here for about an hour. In fact, your your natural almost circadian rhythm is really on point. Like, it almost feels like it's been fine tuned that you should be able to tell what time it is at any given time. They would make sure you I could a, do that. You have a clock tower of the mind, Basil, and uh, that's interesting choice of words. Yeah, and um, you can tell that it is wrong currently as like almost a gut feeling. The presentation of the area is almost telling you that you've been here all along for as long as this place has existed. You belong here. You are a part of it, indistinguishable from it, one to the other. Interesting. So there is no. time dilation here. It feels like that, yeah. Or maybe, maybe this place is convinced that there's time dilation here. Oh, a nice choice of words. Yes. <laughs> um, that means I've had time to think. Then it you hasn't have. just been an hour. It's been it has, forever. It's been it's been theoretically forever. Yes. If you if you draw that point out, uh, give me a uh, give me a roll to do to harness to harness this concept. Okay. Um, you you've had time to think. Certainly, is all I'll say. Uh. <laughs> Demon, what is your name? I name, title, name. I only have the name that can be granted to me through observation. Where I am from, what I am from. We do not have names. We exist sightless and selfless until it is imposed on us. Right. I 
think I've had enough time to start to understand how you work. I guess when I'm asking for your name, I'm not asking for your name as an individual. I'm asking for the greater you's name. The greater me. There are many like you, correct? He looks around the room. There are. Are you asking for the me that I was before coming here, or the me that I am now that I am here? The you before. That is beyond my reach. Then the you now? I... I am... I am hunger. I am a fresh meal. I am that which devours. I am teeth and bone and sinew. I am me. I am here. I am this world. I am Hunger. you. Hunger, great. I can work with that. She claps her hands. <laughs> I've had a bit of time to consider my ESP now. And uh, she's going to not summon another demon. Mm. What she's going to do is she's going to summon, I guess, an astral manifestation of her ESP now that she's beginning to understand it. And it's going to appear to her in the form of a grimoire. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. So. And she's just going to mark down this demon's name. Lovely. <laughs> As hunger, lovely. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, add, add hunger to your grimoire. <laughs> I will. Lovely. Yeah, demons are really fascinating in that light, aren't they? I was not me until I came here. Now I am me, and I am me because I have listened to you, and I have listened to here. He gestures around. You feel another writhing in the darkness. We can walk as we talk. Basil takes a step forward. I guess what's so interesting about demons is... just that. The fact that you're... in a way molded by your surroundings. There's a version of you that isn't molded, correct? That has yet to know. The time before. The time, time that you don't have before. access to. He nods. Those versions of you before are kind of wandering all over the derelict, aren't they? They are. They are not. They are. I do not know. I do not know. I guess you wouldn't. They. I. They. I am not them. Not anymore. No, you're you. I'm. Which is great. I am me. It's it seems to take no small <laughs> yeah. amount of comfort in in being him. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some time to get used to being you. You feel another shift through the swamp. Give me a roll to do. Sixteen? Okay. You'll make it through. Oh, I'm sorry. Um I should add to no. uh she's at plus five resonance, so it's uh, Oh plus five. yes. Oh yes, 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 of course. Okay, you make it through easily. Uh you are very much resonating with the concept of Basilisk Kid right now. Yeah, we're having a great time. You're having a you're having a great time. You walk your way out and you find yourself in a familiar location. This is where you walked in from. It's like a circle. Maybe I'm approaching this in the wrong way, don't you think? How? How? How so? Well, uh, from what I've experienced, Basilisk Id has done a lot of walking. And she's going to walk over here and sit down on this rock. <laughs> um, maybe I don't walk. Maybe I resonate with this place. You... It's different than the rest of the world I'm used to, right? You resonate with this place. You sits down. There's not flame everywhere, is there? He's silent. You know this to be true. To describe the way that this world works, 
there are pockets of flame that feel very much alive. They feel like they're watching you. And then there are segments where it burns away into nothing but ash. A disappearance of the flame, a disappearance of life, of energy. It all drips away into pure nothingness. So I'm going to approach this pocket of flame. Yeah. And I'm going to reach out to it. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to do so with my ESP. Ooh. Okay. So here's a theory. You tell me yeah, if yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I believe that Basil's ESP is taking a bit of flame within herself and compartmentalizing it in the shape of a demon as she understands it, correct? Give me a roll to do. <laughs> Plus five. Plus five. That... That is a good way to put it. These things experientially do seem to have the attributes of a demon that exists outside of your perception, right? It's not like you're simply creating something from your buried, your buried self, your buried memories. You look at hunger behind you, and that is a being that stretches out well outside of what you are capable of creating mentally. It seems like the inception might be exactly as you assert, however. But the second that happens, all bets are off. Can I pull hunger from this pocket of flame? Ooh. Yes, you can. I will. So, you reach out to this pocket of flame and you try to give it expression within yourself. You try to forge a connection, and yeah, you create another one. That this seems is, to be the same individual. This is so neat. <laughs> you pull it out. As Hunger sort of looks over at you. I am now two. You're two. But you're individuals. If I interact with you... This one doesn't feel it, does it? They look at each other. No. So how can you be two? They look at each other. And then this one starts to walk off in this direction, disappearing into the swamp. Let him go. You, you hear a splash as it vanishes. What do you uh, think of the situation we're in, Hunger? Oh boy. It looks <laughs> down as you realize that this pocket of flame is tied directly to this being. And you realize the one that you're talking to is akin to almost talking to this place itself. As uh... That was the plan. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up what's going on. The voice lightly intones. The situation we are in, you, you have eaten me. Right. That's what Collapse said before she ate you. You have, you have eaten me. Sorry, um... I think it's a bit rude of me to have done this, but <laughs> I found that the best way to start a conversation is to first devour something and then figure it out afterwards. <laughs> I... As... I... Clarity. I speak with the voice of Gnashing Ma now. You have... You have... You have dev <clears throat> You have devoured us. Are you hunger or are you gnashing maw? We are. Where is hunger an aspect of gnashing maw? Gnashing maw has always been hunger. Hunger is gnashing maw. You have devoured us, and from your gut, we will devour back. 
Right. That's what's expected of you, right? That's why you were made. There's silence. To be the to be the very thing that everybody feared. There's silence. There yes. It's a bit annoying to have expectations thrust upon you, isn't it? <laughs> we do not wish to be eaten. So we will eat. Is that how you feel? Or is that what the Court of Beasts thinks logic thinks of you? It is. It is. It is. It starts to trail off and think as you, uh. You, uh. Suddenly there's a, there's a call through the area as, uh. You hear a loud. <laughs> Sign rushes into the area and just tackles hunger to the ground. He's like, ah, shit, got, got him, got him, got him. No, no, <laughs> he, he's cool. He's cool. What? Thank what you. Are you. What? <laughs> it's it's all good. This is um, this is a demon who's speaking with the voice of gnashing Ma. I think you're familiar. You guys are friends, right? So he looks down at the demon. Oh, fucking damn it! Ah, the demon. Slight so takes a step backwards. The previous wielder. There's a silence as he looks over. Fuck. No, it's okay. Like seeing an X. Uh worse. Uh, way worse than that. He looks down at the demon. The demon looks over at him. Hey, 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 Basil, come with me a sec. Come with me. Just give me, give me a hot second. Okay. Okay. So we gotta get you out of here. I thought I was making a breakthrough. I've been here forever. Yeah, you're definitely, you're definitely making a breakthrough, but like, maybe not in the way you want. He like peeks over his shoulder over at Hunger. How'd you get in? Did you walk into me? I Yeah, I basically, I've done this before, believe it or not. I, I actually, actually had to do this once before. You with tried somebody to eat who, Nashing Ma? No, I had to do this with somebody who looked a lot like you. He flicks you in the forehead. That, sound, <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> Listen. Do you, okay, okay, okay. Story time. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, squat with me. <laughs> she squats. She <laughs> squats. So, uh, you're familiar with like the the whole multiple multiple cycling worlds thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By by your number, uh, world two. Uh, this is two. No, uh, world two. Uh. Well, uh, oh crap, how do I put this? So, we've been we've been finding the surface for a while. World 2 actually beat us. We lost like big time. We we had to retreat and everything. No more attack on the surface. Whoa, that's got to be really embarrassing. Yeah, we lose all the time. It's we're used to it. Um but uh yeah, World World, world 2 wins and um it starts to like we don't really have access to it. The people start to like fade into a, this weird state of decay. It's a utter mess. I don't. I don't even want to go there anymore. All the plants and animals die. So it's like if uh, fruit is left out and then it goes. Yeah, rotten. eventually it rots. Yeah, uh, that's that's sort your of what your world's is like. The garbage man. It, yeah, that's a little. Honestly, a little too glorious. Garbage men work hard. Uh, I'm. I, we're like. Uh, we're like parasites. Uh, anyway. <laughs> And it's like, regardless. Uh, and then you feel a deep resonance from what's uh, within you, Basil. Long, long time ago, um, in that world. Girl who uh, actually just looked just like you. From what I can tell, since I was the one who sent in to clean it up after the fact. She picked up, uh, that weapon that I tossed away. And, uh, well, as their world's fire was going out, they had a surefire way to get things rolling again. Demonic arms are made from a pretty nasty thing, creature that appears in every single world. She has a name. Okay, add to the story. What's her name? <laughs> um, Riddle Two. 
Riddle 2. Okay, so Riddle 2 shows up in this world. Okay, yeah, it's World 2. Nice. Good name. Um, So Riddle 2 shows up in this world. Apparently they were keeping her for a special occasion. And, and uh, what did they make out of Riddle 2? Well, <sighs> they are better to Nashing Ma, apparently, to get things rolling again. Rebuild the world and uh, get it moving. Their goal was to just uh, uh, dump enough raw flame and miracle energy, whatever the heck Riddle 2 produces on death, into the thing and uh, use the mass amount of growth to spread fire throughout the world. Functionally, they made a second world tree. Peeks over his shoulder didn't work out too great for them and so the, all of this is as the result of trying to extend the life of something natural beyond its natural end yeah and uh more or less uh pats you on the shoulder you might be repeating that cosmic tragedy by accident by feeding gnashing ma to collapse of the living which was created from that situation related to gnashing ma to begin with it all loops oh, back. You're a meat. You're a meat tree outside. You're a meat tree outside, and unless we do something about that, you're literally going to devour the world until there's nothing left. I had to cut it I'm out. Becoming last time. a world tree. Yeah, yeah, you are. Why do you sound excited? I had to stab you the last time you did this with this knife. He points to his knife. I, I'm going to be honest. I expected you to be so far gone that I'd have to do it again. Are you that far gone? He brandishes the knife at you. Do I need to stab you? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Do I feel that far gone? No, you're you're connecting. You're resonating. Listen, I'm just gonna give you one piece of advice. You chow down on gnashing maw. You feed on this massive amount of flame and energy. Your body's not gonna be able to handle it. You're basically gonna become just a giant cancerous mass that spreads out over the world, looking like a tree. And I'm gonna have to kill you. That's that's the downside of this. So like. Stop eating it. Let it go. Drop it. Spit it out. <laughs> okay, I will, but... You will, but? <laughs> what is there to but about? End of the world, man. I thought you guys were trying to stop that. <laughs> Isn't that your thing? I mean, touche, I guess. <laughs> but when I come a little bit close yeah. to ending the world, all yeah. of a sudden it's bad It's dog. a problem. When you yeah, do it, it's your job as a parasite. Yeah, it's actually pretty awesome and badass of me. <laughs> hmm. Glad you understand. I just feel like when you complete a circle, it's an excellent opportunity to finish maybe a sad story that was left unfinished. Conclude a sad... When you complete a circle, you are renewing the cycle. You're you're making you're making you're making it worse. Probably. What it, what are you planning? Probably. <laughs> probably he whispers over here. Seriously, probably he's, is not definitely. This man is so short. He's like yeah, he's, but we're so, squatting, so it's okay. Yeah, you're squatting. It's the the, the the frog walks over to you. <laughs> he's like, so what are you planning then? Don't make me planning? stab you. Um. I guess the plan is to... Okay, get this. Yeah. When that version of me all that time ago took yeah. Collapse of the Living... Right. I was told that Collapse of the Living was this evil thing, right? Yeah. I was going to devour the world. I guess that's what we're doing. Yeah, it's, it's what it, yeah, it's what it's doing. It's what it did. <laughs> but upon getting to know her... Right. I recognized that it wasn't evil that was within her. It was sadness. Sadness from the story that you just told me. Right? Why? What? That thing was, it was a giant meat tree. You're telling me the meat tree was sad when I killed it? Yeah, it's kind of messed up, right? That's, now you feel bad. Yeah, now, now I feel bad. <laughs> You're making me empathize with what is just a sentient lump of meat. I'm saying that it might be worth empathi empathizing with this sentient lump of meat, and then maybe we don't destroy the world. Maybe we have something good enough to save the world. Admittedly, I don't know Collapse's perspective on this. 
that's that's the bit that I didn't get. Like I said, we were booted out of the world. And then they go, oh, Stein, you're the one who could teleport in. Just teleport into the middle of the tree and stab the person inside. And then I did. And I saved the day. Well, there's, and now I'm told well, that's a bad thing. And I just feel, yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe you shouldn't feel bad. You didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle. But between the two of us... Uh, fine. Hazel and Stein. Hazel and Stein. You're pretty court of beast score, to be honest. <laughs> You ever consider being like a park ranger? It sounds not. It's nice. Awful. It's nice. Okay, yeah. tangent, tangent, literal tangent. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. I guess I'm gonna count on you for this. You keep doing whatever you were. What was that? What were you doing? That was weird. You were just sitting there and like vibing or whatever. The I manifested it. the voice of this place within this demon over here. That's literally insane. Keep doing it. <laughs> The man slowly stands from his scratch. Uh, do you want to join me, or are you going to leave? No, I'm staying. I, I need to... St if, if this goes wrong, I'm stabbing you. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you work your way over. And Basil, you know at the very least. For Nashing Ma, you sense its pain. You sense the sensations it feels throughout this entire world, and you sense the whirling hunger. Nashing Ma is some sort of an entity that almost stretches backwards and has become a primal hunger in itself. You have a mouthpiece for it. But you sense, weirdly, that you've picked up the missing part of the puzzle. There is a bit of context that you're missing. And you are reminded of it. When you looked back on this world, Collapse hasn't been able to tell you her story yet. And with that, I leave you to plan. <laughs> when I come back, when I come back, we're going to discover if Stein stabs Basil. <laughs> Let's find out, gang. Let's find out. Okay. <clears throat> Let me double check a few things. Love to see it. Okay. So, as stated, down here. Time to stop this music and swap back to this. You all have given this a little time. As uh, Trouble has worked on your wounds extensively, uh, I'm going to uh, give everyone a roll to recover. You can hit the uh, recover button and restore your health by that much. Oh my god, Seagazer, that's a, that's a really good roll. I'll hit the recover button. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Ace at 31 health. Uh, Willow. What is what yep. is 81? What is 99? How do You're I? You're a 99. <laughs> okay. You could just enter 99, and it'll put you at the exact cap. As you all take a little bit of time to make your bodies uh, feel uh, less, you know, on fire. Uh, and it's at this point. That you hear someone else approaching. The sand is disrupted as Verona like it's like, oh, there you guys are. I should have noticed you would all be taking cover next to the giant toxic waste dump. It's not toxic waste. God, I live in that. <laughs> yeah, it's parasites. Stop being so rude. Also, it's not parasite, it's the fluid that parasites swim through there might be parasites inside of it though so oh, uh, be careful that's probably why we're not supposed to i see <laughs> is that, does that stuff go away or is that just staying there uh, like we can technically ace and i can technically clean it up but for the most part it's going to stay there i would appreciate it if you cleaned it up riddle could probably also clean it up but uh we can I do can, that later yeah plus i can do it a little more efficiently than her yeah mm-hmm yeah 
<laughs> Kevin moves out the way so Verona can start shooting uh. and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Since I'm doing great, I'm gonna get about that. Uh <laughs> Verona looks over at Seagaze and is like just looking at her gives me a weird headache. Okay. I can imagine so. Don't think about it too hard. Seagaze is gonna start moving around and start slurping up the juices. Um you uh you watch as the expectation is that she would destroy it with a wave of her hand or something similar, but uh, realistically speaking, she simply holds out her sword and walks with it like it's a mop, slowly getting rid of all of it. It's like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, she vacuums it all up in the background. <laughs> this sort of clean up detail. Yeah. <laughs> Verona makes her way over and she's like, okay, uh, Willow, spare arm. Oh, thanks, Doc. I Wait, so how does this how does this work? Do you just twist my arm around and then pop it off? Like, yeah, don't look, don't look. It's gonna be ugly. Well, look over here, Joel says, and she makes like a she does like like jazz hands. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, she like conjures like a little like hard light shape and fluctuates it around, and is like, wow, look at how cool and fancy this is. <laughs> wow, that's so cool! Oh my god, my arm! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect treble, the old one too. <laughs> you you feel your arm lock into place as Willow, you get a new arm, heal the wound. Oh, thank you. As for you, she looks over at Ace. Yeah. For I the next few, little I have a few well, holes that only beautiful women can fill, apparently. <laughs> Bruna like, I damn, okay. <laughs> She moves her way over and she's like, this is going to take a little bit to, um, this is going to take a little bit to cure. So, uh, I'm going to stay with you a little while. Uh, Verona's going to chill with you, Ace, until she can pop her once per session heal ability at the start of next session before dipping. <laughs> Understandable. Listen. She's, just, she's gonna hang out with us. Yeah. It's Listen, it's chill. about tactics. <laughs> she, uh, she's like, okay, I'm going to start looking at this. See, guys, are in the distance. Don't look, don't look like too close at it. Like I said, full of parasites. Also, don't remove them. They're doing their job. <laughs> I think they're currently replacing Ace's vital organs. Uh, I was wondering where the vital organs went from the hole in you. Okay, so I mean, the whole. The whole looks empty. You were missing but... the organs before I got there. <laughs> Wait, how many of them? The whole looks empty, but uh, Seagazer yells, The hole isn't empty. Don't look at it too close. You remember the thing I used to tell you, Verona? Yes. Back in R&D, there's no such thing as empty space. There's only things you can't perceive. I... I see. Hmm. Well, I'd love to study it, but now probably isn't the time, is it? No. Also, if you want to hit your burn threshold capacity, then, I mean, you can look at it all you want, but do you really want to be doing that on the battlefield? Uh, no. No, absolutely not. I don't, I don't want to have to, like, bungee jump or whatever uh, to drop my burn. Yeah, Jeez. so maybe don't. I mean, there's always right. other options, but yeah. <laughs> what? Trouble winks at Verona. Verona, Verona, like, what has gotten... <laughs> Willow, I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, that feels crazy, Verona. <laughs> <laughs> Very clearly, it seems like you guys are holding up okay. Plus, you managed to come back with one additional uh, looks over at Seagazer. Actually, uh, two. Preacher? Two. Two? She tilts her head. Two, yeah, are you talking about that? Rio. <sighs> right. Rio's off. Yeah, she gave me an update on her situation. Apparently, she's just going to be out of commission because she's working on spreadsheets or something. Absolutely insane. Back in the station one days, you couldn't get her to do data entry, and now here she is focusing on it during the big battle. This is it's a joke. I'm job. Yes, this is a joke. I'm actually very happy to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> also, Verona. Hmm. The theory we posed is right. You don't need to build me a hydron collider. Uh, okay, so you've got to tell me these things before I start, before I set the money aside and pass it through Andalane fucking Vega to purchase decommissioned airports. 
Well, I'm sorry. I didn't have a chance to check it before this, now. The Geist Sky Base is already under our jurisdiction. We were using it for Opia training, and it has the uh, right business. I shouldn't. You guys are in the middle of a battlefield. Regardless, you know the training camp that you guys all practiced in? You you remember. It's back in the day. Opia, uh, Geist had a space program that was well underway that was randomly canceled. And uh, they purchased a large area uh, around the border to Gravnir that, like, it comes with an entire whole ass mountain. You guys trained on a mountain base before uh, joining Flow. Uh, the big thing there is about like 75% of it was still owned by Geist. Uh, you look over at Verona and you realize, yeah, all those barbed wire fences that you used to have to run past now are probably under Opia's jurisdiction. That purchase is roughly equivalent to, well, the size of an airport. <clears throat> <laughs> Verona like, right, well, you guys are in the middle of a battle, so I'm not going to distract you with boring business details, but if you ever feel like revisiting old haunts, uh, it's technically ours now. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Cheap. Man, looks... training was so... Looking back, that was such a good time. It was pointless, <laughs> Willow. How was it pointless? Did training learn... is never pointless. Did you Thank learn you. anything? Yeah, I learned to... Uh, I made friends with, with you guys during training. Just because so the two really of you important. specifically did not need the training, even though I'm sure that the first aid and disaster relief were new for both of you, or at least you, Ace. Well, we might have had it from the swamp, but that doesn't mean that everyone else didn't need it. I mean, sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> if, if I'm bleeding and you fill me with parasites, I'm going to be very sad. <laughs> That's not in the manual. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't exactly have a first aid kit on hand, do I? <laughs> Look, it worked for I Stein. Mean, He's alive. Yeah, I mean, I'm your yeah, first... Yeah, but we had to replace all of Stein's organs after. I am better than a first aid kit. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had to replace his organs, not replace Stein completely. I suppose. If but push comes to shove. Don't go around doing that unless you have to. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. Willow can call in nine before you fill her with parasites. I mean, uh, look, what if Willow just is unconscious and can't really handle it and just can't do the stuff? Look, I have it handled. Look, Willow, you're in safe hands. Willow passed out unconscious and she can't handle it? Yeah, that doesn't sound like Willow. Oh, yeah, you should have <laughs> seen a few you, minutes ago. Why don't you come with me? I can heal you without using parasites. <laughs> No, why yeah. can't you do that, Race? <laughs> yeah, she'll just fill you with holes. Wait, will I will refrain from saying what I was thinking. <laughs> Man, I wish I had your ESP right now. <laughs> I don't need the ESP to figure it out. <laughs> right, Seagazer speaks up. She's like, <clears throat> I think I can clarify one thing at the very least. Uh, I guess... Not only how I got here, but uh, there are some relatively important things that you all need to know, uh, I guess, about how things operate on the other side and the gag order we're under. She sits down and crosses her legs. That would uh, be good for me to know. <laughs> I don't know what Grasp got up to, but uh, Guy's been sort of... She sort of struggles with this. He started off being, like, one of the favored reflections, and the more, uh, the closer and closer he got to you, Willow, the more and more restricted he was until he was bound to quarters, same as me. Mm. You know, the whole thing about, you know, fighting and dying and fighting and dying again uh is good and all for a heroic cause that means nothing but as soon as you start breaking free of that sort of box then that's when things get a little bit hairy huh uh, the, if the fight isn't for nothing it's just been co-opted by things yeah working with people uh working with people with an agenda is almost an inevitability but just the same okay she sort of like pats the ground she's like Functionally, to introduce myself, I'm 
I'm Seagazer. I'm the reflection that doesn't exist yet. It's not normal operation that somebody like me is made. So I guess you could say I'm more like an artificial life form. I'm a down payment. I'm a bet that a certain event will occur in the future. Uh, waged by, she sort of like looks into the distance. From what I understand, your god of humanity. Oh, he's betting on the pattern repeating. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, think, think of me as a big chunk of destiny that like, <clears throat> uh, think of me as a big chunk of destiny, or if you don't like that world, uh, word, predictive data. Almost a guarantee that an event will occur at some point in the future that will lead to the creation of, and I quote, the ultimate sword. I'm not that yet. I'm a bet that that's going to occur. I see. So your reflection based off of the event in which he bet on a future, not the future event. Yeah, it's a little sketchy. It's like, it's like someday you're going to own a house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you wind up buying the property beforehand and you take out massive loans from the bank to make the house exist beforehand? Like, I guess this is, I'm just describing normal loans. Like, you never- oh, So you're a house. I'm a, yeah, uh, shit. And the powers of the mortgage. Yeah. You understand no, a actually, mortgage, but it, you don't understand credit cards? Isn't no, it a little bit more like- Credit cards are very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it more like Seagazer herself is the mortgage? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm- Okay. Basically, I'm just here to guarantee that this series of events goes off because it is in my best interest that they happen. For example, if they don't, if the ultimate sword isn't created, the bank will come and collect me. I see. You're effectively what he put aside as collateral. Uh, think of... This analogy I... is getting kind of crazy. <laughs> like... Okay, let me put it straightforward. I'm an artificial existence that will only be allowed to live for real if Riddle R and Dite dies. Yeah, it's like movies where it's just like you change the future and then like you start fading away or something. Yeah, you change the future or whatever. Also, a movie analogy. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> so, if that future doesn't happen, is someone going to physically come and get you like the Hunter of Mortals or is it hey, just a thing it where It will probably disappear? be someone much stronger than the Hunter of Mortals. Yeah, it's, um... That doesn't mm. take much. I... Mm. She, like, Love squints. the cockiness. Please. <laughs> she, like... She sort of squints. She's like, uh, no guarantee of how it would happen, uh, because it's literally treading new territory. Desi usually doesn't take bets like this. Destruction betting on an event that hasn't even happened yet that's so theoretically legendary Trust me, this will be good. I can create an entire person out of this. If it doesn't pan out for her, it's her ass on the line as well as, well, mine. No, it makes sense that everyone would take this bet. It is the most this will happen event ever. Yeah. It always happens. So? When you've got something that occurs every single world, like a Riddle Arendite showing up and dying and producing a big burst of power, you can suddenly take a bet like this, a bet like me, that she's going to die and do the same thing that she always does. Yeah, and makes sense. Here I am, a creature spawned from theory. And now effectively we have to choose between letting Riddle die so you can live, or letting you die so she can live. It's like, put us in a moral conundrum. Mm. That's kind of sketchy. Well, it's not even just kind of sketchy, that's super fucked up. Seagazer sort of like shakes her head, she's like, yeah, more or less you get it. Yeah, no, it's the situation we were in before, they've just added more stakes. I don't think it's really that complicated. Hmm? Huh? I mean, the problem is, is that you exist here right now. She nods. So... He just kind of shrugs. 
If I just keep using you and do doing legendary stuff with you, then a reflection of you will be made anyways. Yeah, but it won't be me. No, <laughs> it... There's a certain... There's a certain cost that needs to be paid here for the girl that's in front of us to keep existing as she is. If we don't pay that cost, she will be changed or taken, is effectively the problem. Uh, huh. She actually, um... Ooh, this is a fun thing. She, uh, she folds her hands and she's like, I... I guess, just for... to clarify one thing, um... Hmm. She sort of taps her foot. Uh... There is something I've heard you guys say a few times, and it's something that most of the reflections, I think, lean into pretty heavily, but it's not necessarily the truth. It... Hmm. This idea of, like, creating us, right? Like a legendary event creating a reflection. Uh, how do I put this? It's not like you're giving birth to us or making us. Sorry, I just hear all the weird family talk and I kind of got to just draw attention to it, she says. And then she actually points over at her horn and she's like, it's, um, well, I know this is weird saying when I look like this, but uh, it's more hopeful than you think. It's not as bad as you expect. God, I'm struggling no, with my words I, right now. I understand. Um, she, she's like, she sort of like squares up and walks up to Ace, and she like, uh, she's like, a reflection is a person on the far end of a very long tunnel, and what you're passing them isn't life. It's just a section of your own power, right? You know what you get back for that? Some of ours. And we pass it back and forth, functionally inspiring each other. It's not like a one directional thing. When a person dies and a bit of their flame goes away to create a reflection, it's actually just passed to someone. They take strength from that story. It's turned around into their own strength and passed back. Think of it more like people inspiring each other. Your stories and your struggles matter. They matter to us and always have. God, why am I the one doing this? <laughs> I'm the reflection that wants to fuck off and do nothing. <laughs> it's and sort yet of you're like... here, bound by responsibility. Yeah, because your guys got thrown in jail. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like how Grasp inspired you and affected you a lot, Willow. You do the same thing. And when when a reflection is made from a person, it's very similar. She folds her arms and she's like... Can, from what I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, of course, it can be used to influence an already res existing reflection, which is typically the connection between wielder and reflection. When the reflection wielder dies, that phenomena occurs. A new reflection is almost like using that information as an info packet, right? She sort of looks over at Seagazer. Not always. Sometimes the people exist before they even make a bond with someone on your side. Oh, really? She nods. Listen, what you're passing over isn't life. It's just stories. It's all we've been passing back and forth. She, like, sort of scratches the back of her head. <sighs> to that regard. She, like, looks over at you, Ace. You think this whole glimpsing the future thing is something that I could do on my own? Uh, Running all the precognition stuff. That's something that I got from you. Mm. She looks at... You feel those eyes bearing into it. Uh, bearing into you. Just the same. You gotta think about what you're offering Grasp. Well. And similarly, she looks over at you, Trouble. I'm sure you can figure out why you're Destruction's favorite. Oh, yes. I think I'm currently the person bound to the most reflections, so I must be quite and... the uh, <laughs> influence with how frequently I also do things that give and her material. Guess what you're passing all of them. Oh. Inspiration? <laughs> 
<laughs> cooking advice? Uh, <laughs> oh wait, he did he did say that all of those reflection users were badasses, so <laughs> she nods. She's like <clears throat> So yeah, just I guess think of it like this. Those are people over there. You've been lending them help just the same as they've been lending you help. No, I I remember when I was bound to my first reflection, I could still hear their voices. Um, it was like being on the phone with someone 24-7 for me with my listen ability. And as I bound to more reflections, the voices just got quieter and quieter. But I know that the people are still there, I just can't hear them. Which is why I insist on letting so many of them fight through me as a partner. Stick is or nods. Each one wants something different, and each has a different reason for making this deal to begin with. Uh, yeah, I, I guess this is just a long way of saying, um, the, they're heroes too, I guess. Oh, God, this feels so weird on my tongue. <laughs> I think I could speak to Grasp. He said he was put in jail for yeah. what he did. Yeah, anyone that's got a problematic ability or existence is generally tucked away in part of the base. We're not allowed to wander too much because we might cause trouble to destructions like overall vision of how the war should go. Um, I think Grasp is categorically becoming that. Uh, your keyhole friend has always been something like that. Sorry to break it to you. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I want to see if I could speak to him because we are connected via the ground. I mean, he should get a phone <laughs> call, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you need some help, I can try and help pinpoint it if you're if it's not working out for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it a try. That's, uh, really, in front of us. <laughs> be kissing get your head out of the gutter <laughs> i just fixed that hole <laughs> uh, trouble you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna lean in and give uh give will a little bit of help i'm gonna help willow call out to grasp using the okay. news calling ability okay uh give me a roll to do uh, uh, Willow, do you want me to just pass you a dice? Um, what's the other thing you could do? I could buff you. <laughs> I don't know which will be better, so maybe passing a dice? Okay, actually, Jay, could yeah. we just use the Muse Sync for this? Uh, uh, no, because this is an effort to puncture through something else Through entirely. something else. Okay, so if you're trying to push through something, I'll give you the buff because then it will be a roll to do, right? Yes. Okay, take the three exploding D6s. Okay. Willow stances up. And let me grab this. I'll, ma I'll match you. Okay. Willow, you reach out through your reflection as a tunnel, trouble you functionally tuning Willow, and you try to contact the person on the other side. You can tell something very specific is happening. The connection can form. He isn't answering on purpose right now. Oh. He's staying quiet intentionally. And you do uh, not know why. He's trying to keep a low profile. Oh, they're probably watching him. They're probably watching him. That was yeah. it? What? What did you expect to happen? <laughs> I mean, not so everyone's as like... loud as you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah no, that uh, that's the surprising part. <laughs> Hello. She... Yeah. Okay. Trouble's gonna come over. She leans over and whispers something in your ear, Willow, and I'm going to DM you. Oh. 
Treble is going to explain her upcoming plan to Willow oh, privately. I see. Sigis leans over into you, Ace. Yeah. Whisper, whisper, whisper. <laughs> uh, she like she looks over and is like, "Hey, I just want to say a few things really quick to like clear the air." Yeah. For the most part, I could like I got an impression of where you were. And sometimes I'd get bursts of power, but it wasn't like a one-to-one -one thing. Whenever people would like interfere close, I could get in the way. Like I caught compulsion trying to sneak into your brain a lot and I slapped her out of the air. But like, just to make it clear, I wasn't like spying on you or anything. I don't really You still have a right to your own privacy. Listen, it's important to me at the very least because that would make me uncomfortable. I didn't cross that barrier for you, okay? All right. <laughs> she stares back at you and she's like, you should accept my grace with some dignity. <laughs> I mean, <That>. like, <clears throat> your grace, if you were the one my hearing grace. all my life, I feel like you were the one who would get hurt the most from that. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't think you can handle a lot, really. Yeah. Oh, you don't think I could handle your movie star life? <laughs> no. You can barely I mean... handle this conversation. <laughs> she, you feel her entire face stand up and you, you see her like, that? How, how rude, actually. Wow, so this is what it's like in person. <laughs> She's yeah. like, huh. Interesting. Okay. She, like, pauses. Hmm. Being a factor in the conversation is admittedly pretty different, but at the same time... Huh. Yeah, I think I prefer this. I mean... He just kind of, like, looks around. It's... Something you learn to appreciate, I guess. Huh. She uh, sort of stops, takes a step backwards, and is like, <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> I apologize for interrupting what's happening over there, but I've got one more thing, I guess, to describe about myself before this gets, before we get any further. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm purely artificial, right? Yeah. Yeah? Are, are you? Yeah. Um, more or less, what happened was pretty simple. Uh, flame, if you gather enough of it, eventually does get ideas for itself, starts to think. And uh, once it gains that capacity to think, you can make it think all sorts of things. She just sort of stops and looks away. Uh, this is um, a little awkward to say, so bear with me a little bit. Um. I was functionally a collection of flame in a tube and in order to exist as myself and to listen really close to a certain story. And she, um, she holds her hands out and allow me to. <clears throat> so first up, this was presented to me as a fairy tale. This is more or less the story that's going to happen. This is the bet that Lafidel's making. A long, long time ago, by my estimation, about World Nine, it was once a hero that all the people of the world looked up to. He was the respected Ace Galatine of that world. And everyone not only celebrated his presence, he acted as a beacon that drove them all forwards into the future. On the other side of things, there was a second hero. This girl was, well, I, she was a frontiersman, barely holding by in the vast desert of the world. The two of them couldn't see eye to eye, regardless of what happened. As Ace, 
fought back the end week after week into year after year. Eventually cracks started to form in his heart. Cracks started to form in his team. Eventually, they all succumbed to a level of despair that drove them into giving up in the, on the world that they believed in. The other hero, this girl, however, kept on fighting for the sake of the world. And in that, and again, I can't believe, okay. You can't judge me, you can't laugh, you can't even make a face. She says, looking over at Trouble. Trouble, like, I understand where the story's going. I won't <coughs> judge you. <clears throat> that hero found an angel. <laughs> Seagazer visibly winces. A uh, divine being that came down from the sky. The girl and that angel together fought back against the end until they won not a decisive victory, but a temporary one. Against impossible odds, they managed to delay the end at least for a little bit longer. They fled and returned to the hole that the other hero was living in. The world had sacrificed itself so that he might survive. They found him. And Sugazer opens and closes her hand. That's when the hero killed the girl. She slowly inhales and exhales. And in the world below, a demon arrived using the girl's body as a puppet. She summoned, a, he summoned a great dragon. The dragon inherited that girl's wishes and fell uselessly in love with the angel. <laughs> Sigizer lets a little bit of her own personal opinion in. Time passed and the dragon and the hero fought for quite some time. The angel, with infinite capacity for love and kindness, she looks at trouble again, <laughs> found herself caring for both the hero and the dragon an equivalent amount. And it was in this moment that the hero struck down the angel. The dragon, in this moment, in all of its great sorrow, poured all of its strength into rending open a portal, dragging her back into the world. Its own life forfeit in the process. And so, hi Basil. <laughs> the hero and the angel wound up alone together, living happily ever after. So when the story started, Treble yeah. had a very solemn expression on her face. Yeah. Like she knew she knew what yeah. was coming. Yeah. And it's like, this is a story she's lived. And then as the story gets closer to the end, you see her expression go from like this very like solemn, like elegant look to like this. <laughs> and then like this. And then like this. And she goes, that's what she told you? <laughs> yeah, that's the story I was told to focus on if I wanted to, you know, gain any fraction of this power. She gestures down to herself. But uh, I can tell the situation isn't exactly as it was presented to me. Oh, she must be saying that because she's jealous. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dragon seems alive and well. And it also seems like you're dating. So, uh, yeah. First of all, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trouble says, she's clearly peeved. She's like, that is, well, I guess you could reduce the story down to those beats. It just does not cover what happened at all, really. Like, yes, 
the world did sacrifice itself so that Decca could live. Yes, I did try to save both Riddle and Decca. Yes, Decca did kill me as a way to kill Riddle. Yes, all of that happened. But the idea of oh, I loved them both equally, and I and this she, trouble just she just can't even. She's a like cringing. She's like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> And did we live happily? Does this look like a happy arrangement to you? <laughs> Seekers are like, uh, uh, she like looks away. I don't necessarily know. Uh, I mean, I can't speak to your personal experiences. All I'm saying is this is the blueprint. She like it looks is, over it is, at Ace. It is. That is the pattern. Yeah. That's what that you're I've been trying to warn you about. Yeah, that's more or less what you're headed towards. So, um. It's kind of your destiny to kill Riddle. Don't you think they could have come up with a better story? <laughs> it's not a story they made. It's one that I lived, so maybe cut it out, shithead. I mean, you say it's destiny, right? Do I have to fight you or something to stop this? How do, how do we stop this? Okay, so destiny, everyone uses these big grand terms like destiny and fate. But it's something much more simpler than that. It is just who we are as people conflicting and creating a pattern. It's the kind of person you are, it's the kind of person I am, it's the kind of person Riddle is. It makes us predisposed to this type of story playing out. Yes, it's destiny, or yes, it's fate. But that's that gives it an, a separation from us and our the parts of this pattern that we contribute to. There's a reason me and Riddle are acting the way we are. We're being extra careful to take responsibility for the ways that we as people contribute to this scenario playing out. Sig is her sort of size, which more or less brings me back to the vision. That's, uh, me running my that's basically me running calculations on what's gonna happen she like it's... looks up she like looks over at ace you want me to run the numbers again nah I think it's gonna be the same outcome apparently well we there's really... some stuff i yeah. think that is important to say here I actually don't think that the situation as it is right now is predisposed to go that way vis-a-vis -vis my personality, your personality, and Riddle's personality. That's sort of the issue. There are other factors that will tilt the situation. You... Hmm. Trouble actually tries to listen. Yeah. To Ace. She's done it before, and she was trying to listen for a certain sound inside of him. Is that mm. still there? Oh, boy. <sighs> With all the astral parasites jammed in this man, it is literally impossible to tell. Okay. Can I try and listen to it from Seagazer? Yeah. Give me a roll to do. Do? Not die? Even though it's listening? Uh, yeah, you can give me a die. So you listen to Seagazer, and what you feel from her is very much, it is the sound of a reflection. Okay. This person over here in front of you does seem to be exactly who she reports she is. She is a reflection, a construction, and an emanation of this tale. All right. So if we were to go through that the scenario that we are in to its conclusion with no external factors, just the three of us, I actually think we'd be fine. Um, mm. The issue is that it, there are external factors and they will ne not necessarily influence us vis-a-vis -vis, like possession, though you have to worry about that. Um, not with me around. <laughs> Seagazer says very proudly. <laughs> you... 
you... Me and Riddle put in a lot of effort to be very careful here. You actually put in a lot of effort. I don't even know if it's instinctual or not. Um, there's a couple of issues. One, Riddle's memory loss is actually causing a lot of issues here. I understand why it... I understand on some level why he tried to wipe the slate clean for her. But her inability to remember or be told or warned or anything is quite an issue. She has to just sort of shoot in the dark. Um, there is an issue for you two, she says, pointing at the two of you. I can't hear it right now, probably because you have so many parasites in you, and I don't hear it coming from Seagazer, but that might be because of the the reflection. Um, I don't know if you've... You are you were possessing Ace for a while, right, Seagazer? Two nods. Did you feel the pieces in there? Or did you just become part of those? Seagazer basically stops. She's like... Yeah. Uh, I don't need to be the first to say this, but uh, if somebody's tampered with your body... Really now? Yeah. Other than me. Other than me. Disclaimer. <laughs> I feel like There's... that's a total norm now. Uh, it's actually a curse. It's a curse. Anyone gonna, you know, inform me? Anyone gonna... So, the... At the end of the story that Seagas are told, there was a moment for the miracle that the... that the girl performed to bring the angel back, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There are certain criteria that have to be met for that to be able to occur. Um, the girl's heart has to break. And she has to die. The hero killed the angel, not to kill the angel, but to kill the girl. Right? Before he did that, during the period of time where the girl was gone, and it was just the two of them, you could say the girl has a Guardian angel isn't the right term. Guardian demon? Guardian... what was it they called it? They called her Satan? <laughs> <laughs> Took all the broken pieces of that girl's heart and turned it into a curse and placed it on the hero. And it kills him every single time. Since then. For what he did. Okay. And I've only seen two of you make it through this. You actually... My theory, I'm not totally sure, because I don't know how your father, I assume, would have known about this, but your formless style actually... It almost seemed engineered specifically to hold it in place and keep it from killing you. Hmm. <sighs> Your formless style, at least the way that I was perceiving it, almost seemed like a controller that you were using to control something else's power that was inside of you. That's what it was. Well... Uh, the way I can tell it... is... I don't think my father knew. But if this guy is as smart as you guys say he is, it's probably Laffadel's doing. At the end of the day, whether this sword is created or I live or anything like that happens, either that sword is made or I'm me. Right? Alright, you watch Seagazer's eyebrows pick up. It's a winning situation either way, right? I'm a highly possessable, extremely strong body. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a win no matter what. <laughs> Either way, a weapon is created that will probably serve the purposes that they're looking for. 
Oh, that's a very fascinating point. Sigazer actually thinks about it. She's like, huh. Yeah, I guess I didn't really think of it that way. The ultimate that's... weapon. Either w Yeah, either way we lose. That sucks. Yeah, that makes sense. Dribble looks annoyed. <laughs> Man, I don't envy you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and... No, I'm going to keep that to myself. Like, she she gives her she gives her like leans over and she's like she's gonna sp -sp 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 in your ear. <laughs> and she's like, hey, oh, it's their turn. Okay, what are the? Okay, I've been like slapping a lot of people away from possessing you, right? Yeah. What if one of them is Lavadel's ghost? Like his ghost is just ready to take your body. The I ultimate mean... weapon, right? Like he's gonna take your body. Uh, sorry, I'm panicking about this. Look, <laughs> the thing about. Weasels like that guy is that he sets up oh. not situations where you can't really right. lose, right? Yeah. Okay. So no matter what happens, he'll probably try to win. So the, yeah. at least yeah. realizing that gives us an extra step. So Seagazer, okay. with this yeah. new information, could you run the numbers this time? Yeah. Can do. <laughs> Thank you. Holy shit. Ciela burns in front of you. <laughs> and with this new information factored in, you see yourself standing at the burning stairs. And <laughs> you see something animate itself on the far edge of the arena. It almost springs to life, a visual simulation that's drawn from both your and Seagazer's experiences. The flame solidifies. You see a figure standing there, holding the blade that you know to be Riddles in his hand. He swings it back and forth. You've seen this vision before as you've seen it again. Discarded body in the water in front of you, cut in half. He holds the sword now steeped in her blood that shines with an almost like, the line of light binds in on itself, twisting again and again and again. And uh, Seagazer, uh, Seagazer uh, is like, okay, do your best. Focus in on that individual in front of you. I need you to focus absolutely everything you have. We need to know who that is. Yeah, Ace is just like hands in pocket. It just waves, yo. He takes a step forwards. Hey. Look, this is gonna sound very weird, but th this isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> You register it as the simulation starts to break. Like, it's like, uh, Seekazer's like, okay, breaking the prediction isn't gonna make things easier. I understand this is how you overcame your ESP test, but... Look, it's and... fine. It's a prediction of the future. He doesn't know that I'm lying. He doesn't know that I'm truthful. Look, all I want to do is get this guy talking, right? If all these schemer people are, as they say, then these guys probably won't want to shut up about their plans or whatever. Right? <laughs> I mean, look you at this what? guy. Fair enough. The Thornmast individual takes another step forwards. Give me a roll to do, Ace. Yeah. 23. The man takes a step forwards and he's like, not real. Interesting. And... You see him almost consider that point, nod. One of Seagazer's simulations, then. Yeah, you see, it's a it's a funny little trick. If I just, you know, run the simulation like I'm just asking you these questions while I'm there in the future, don't you think that would produce the answers I'm looking for? He nods. It would. And if we're on this course, then there's no harm in saying it. He sort of 
weirdly spins the sword around. We're working towards a similar future. An unavoidable end. It seems like we're on course, speeding full, uh, moving full tilt ahead. So, genuinely, for not only your sake, but for Seagazers, I hope to meet you on these stairs one day. He holds his hand out for you. My name is Lafidel, the god of humanity. Oh yeah, also, piece of advice. Hmm. I don't think that girl behind you's dead. <laughs> Room. <laughs> the simulation fades as you feel the fires licking across your skin slowly fade. Yeah, that checks out. Hey, so, um... Mike got footage of that guy in this building. Huh. I'm gonna kill him! I'm gonna kill him! <laughs> I'm gonna kill that fucker! I knew he wasn't fucking dead! <laughs> she has two of those things like she's definitely just cracking her knuckles like that fucking bitch! I oh my god. Triple's like pacing in a circle, like I'm gonna kill him. Okay. I'm I'm getting riddled, we're gonna beat him to death. <laughs> Under understandable. Um uh, uh sorry to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. If he's here. Uh, and you see him, uh, beat him to death. Uh, for now, Verona pauses and touches her ears. She's like, you act like killing him last time worked. Look. <laughs> I mean, I didn't kill him. I mean, I didn't do it with my hands. <laughs> if I want him dead, he will die. <laughs> um, but it sounds like you need him alive or something. So I'll just beat him within an inch of his life. I mean, killing him would, wouldn't really change anything. His body didn't really look... What did his body look like? Uh, uh, wrapped head to toe is the best way to put it. Uh, the culprit from a Detective Conan. It literally is like data missing. It was not from a, you, could, you couldn't you could see his costume or what he might look like. It is literally, Seagazer is unable to emulate it because she does not have that information. Yeah. Oh, I mean, um, I could tell you what love it all looked like. The the vine the vine mask aspect is at least registered in seagazer's like memory more or less um you saw alternate versions of this where deco was on the stairs mm -hmm. which likely would also fulfill the prophecy it would still meet the same criteria yeah. the fact that lafidel showing himself is uh that's something <laughs> i uh, god this is gonna sound stupid i don't think lafidel has a body I've seen many different futures with many different people at those stairs, oh. and I think he might just be possessing what, whoever he can get his hands on. Oh. Or it could be it doesn't matter who's at the stairs as long as somebody's there, and since it seems like we might literally be in a situation where nobody but him will show up. <laughs> okay, so my ghost law at all theory wasn't off the mark. <laughs> 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 No, there's, I knew there was something going on. There is an I issue. I hate him so much. There's an issue. Regardless of how many times I render it and re-render it, she looks around. I don't see you there, looking over at Treble. I don't see Willow. I don't see Argos. I don't see Basil. It's only them. And in a lot of cases... So there's something stopping us from going with you? In a lot of cases, the data points towards you guys being dead at this point. <laughs> Look, I told you before, Apples Willow. Willow, I told you this before, back when we were in Ciala. Every time I'm there, it's only me, Riddle, and one other person. Either you guys are not there with me, or worst case scenario, you die by that point. So, with that information, good luck. Now, there's a car I need to grab. <laughs> Wait. Verona yells for me. <laughs> and then she's You guys taking a car up? I mean, there's... It's, it's Venter's car. He did some things with it. I could do the same things. <laughs> Verona I might actually... just take Willow and teleport. Verona I actually mean... pauses here and is like, oh, right. 
sorry. We got so caught up in the conversation. We're fanning out. Uh, new orders. She, uh, looks oh. through the area. Um, it seems like Seder is currently being killed by Isaac. Uh, she, like, looks over at you two. Uh, you two move to support. Looks over at Ace. And then for you, Cast and Nectar wish to speak to you. Specifically. Alone. Right. Well, that means, uh, nothing good. So, <laughs> right, come on, see user. Fine. I, no, I'm coming too. <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry, uh, the cast insisted alone, but, uh, she points to the hole in your gut. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. Some things take precedence. Okay, everybody fan out. <laughs> oh, yeah, also, Willow. <laughs> yeah? Remember, future vision, you're not being there. That doesn't mean you die that day. It could also mean you could die earlier, so, like, you know. <laughs> How? What am I supposed to do with that information, Ace? Just keep don't, it in mind. Don't Just die. don't die. Oh shit, you're right. All right. <laughs> Verona pinches the bridge of her nose. I have no idea how I mean, the fuck you people talk to each other. You see a lot of fire there. What if I'm just in my fire form? <laughs> that means you're dead, Willow. No, it just means I shed my mortal skin. <laughs> then God help us all. <laughs> and Shrevel and Willow poured out and you guys poured out in your respective dire uh, directions, leaving that lonely place behind you. Okay. Bathroom time? Then you know what time it is. It's time to get a... Uh... Lay intense. Lay intense! Everybody use the bathroom! <laughs> and... I'm gonna beat Lothad all to death. I'm gonna beat him to death. I can't beat him to death because we need him to make Seagazer or whatever, but like, I'm gonna beat him to death. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> fucking guy, dude. Just chillin'. I mean, like, you kinda, 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 kinda saw it coming, you know? I mean, you know. It's kind of a guy chillin'. Up to no good. Look. I'm allowed to say I'm going to beat him to death because he's my friend. If he dies, I'll cry. Finally, we can get back to the main character, Robin. That's what I'm saying. For real. For real. Look, man. I, I, just a few more tweaks, and then at that final staircase, it's going to be Robin instead of Ace. <laughs> Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go. It's, it's, it, this is what Laffodil really wants. I don't think he- I don't think he's super cared who it was. He's just like, someone needs to show up to complete my prophecy. <laughs> How everyone can lose a girl of the century to my most hyped part of the fan alley. Yeah. <laughs> Look, dude, lay in tents. It's a roulette wheel. Someone's gonna someone's gonna die. <laughs> I'll be right Mario back. Party game. God, <laughs> dude. And some and fucking compulsion got the Mad Cats controller. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever played that one Mario Party game where you gotta like blow up the balloon and whoever makes it pop like dies and then you keep cycling till there's one guy left? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's great. Can you, someone asked Jesse to give me, like, more facts-based rundowns on FC Gaze or Stupid Fairy Tale? No, because uh, legends aren't made by facts. <laughs> They're made by fiction. Wow. They're made by people who want stories to go a certain way. Yeah. I knew something was up with you this point, though. Like, we don't know if Vine Mask is Laffadel, right? All we know is that they yeah. look similar, right? And it's that if kind of thing. They look similar, or it will be Laffadel, but is not. Yeah, I, I, I think. Many things. I think it's Ghost Laffadel theory. It's I, yeah, so I, think, on point. I think he's <laughs> tran he's transcended the mortal plane. Right. I sense. think Lafadel's whoever's got the mask on. Oh, that's what the point of the mask is. That's what the mask <laughs> is. It's like the mask movie, you know. You put it on and you start, you start making the ooga. The ooga, 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 ooga. 
I'm back. <laughs> oh my god. You Somebody on... stop him. In true fashion, <laughs> Lafidel is a ghost that haunts the narrative. But in a very yes. literal way as well. In a literal way of he's haunting yeah. your narrative, literally. Jay, pick your yeah. DMs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that's one reason his plan could go great. That guy who said Lafidel sends his regards, that could have just been Lafidel. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so funny. Uh, did the, did the meme image of Obama giving himself the medal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lafidel and his machinations. As the true god of humanity, I am all humans. Therefore, uh, give me that body. <laughs> Give me that body, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's knife proof, bro. It's what he always wanted. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just uh updating. I'm um, updating my session plan. Oh we're uh we're we're doing pretty good actually. Um Okay. Yeah. Freezing through. Yeah. Uh there, that's what that's what I said to Tiny. Lovely. <laughs> Tiny, how do you like my funny, silly, haha plan? That plan is insane, but you know it's gonna work. I feel <laughs> <laughs> only the insane plans work. Mm. So basically, here's how this is gonna go. We are going to do one turn of the RTS into actually. No, 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 I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, we're gonna do Lun Tense into one turn of the RTS as the last big, like, event of the session. And then um, I am going to do wrap-up scenes uh, to, like, almost come to a conclusion. They're not, like, they're not gonna be small scenes uh, in terms of, like, significance, but I'm gonna do a bunch of short, impactful scenes to round out the session. Um, but La Intense is, this is... This is the, the the last big moment of the session in terms of gameplay. So uh, let's, oh boy, let's fucking go. This this theme works uh, adequately well. It is uh, intense enough, but uh, you know, sometimes you need something a little uh, fancier. I thought you were going to say sometimes we need something a little more French. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> we begin our stage. <clears throat> Act one, scene five. Learn tense. <laughs> <laughs> You feel the personal impact of this scene. Significant. Touching. It is like the coalescence of a butterfly's wing. In this moment, Liam. Yes. You are burdened. <laughs> you are burdened by the loss of your dear father. And the only one here to comfort you now is your dearest and closest friend with whom you have no homoerotic tension. <laughs> <laughs> Your father, a staunch businessman, believed in opening Skypoint to the world around. He believed in his heart of hearts that it was time to end isolationist policy, to welcome in those from abroad. But tragically, before his meeting, he was assassinated, struck down in his own home. You warned him time and time again. He needed more bodyguards, yet he did not listen. And now you find yourself, having pulled yourself from the bleak ocean of grief, alongside your dearest friend. End scene. <laughs> Begin. <laughs> Liam uh, sort of leans back in his chair and looks longingly at the sky and simply <sighs> <laughs> How how are you feeling? I uh, I am I am trapped 
in the deepest despair, my friend. <laughs> my poor papa. All of his dreams come to a star. He, it was his dearest, dearest wish to finish this before the cancer got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Extra I have gravitas. heard of the... I have heard of the nefarious assassin group, the Cancer. <laughs> uh, it's actually lay cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, le cancer. His life cut short by the crab's claw. <laughs> Uh, down here, down here, down here in the peanut gallery, you just see some... Oh, very nice, very nice! Uh, uh, I believe this is... Um, sh shit, is in my queue? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> hey, guys! Uh, I, uh... Oh, crap. Mm. Hey, guys. <laughs> he puts on a serious face! But bon bonjour. Uh, thanks. Um... I understand if uh, times are rough and uh, my uh, dearest Liam um, it, uh, looks at his looks at his hands. A apple of my eye. Um, just know that uh, your father, when he was tragically snipped down in his prime, <laughs> he um <laughs> he had a lot of uh. I had so much uh, unfinished business, big dreams to lean into and fill, and you don't need to shoulder those dreams alone on the big, muscular shoulders of yours. <laughs> 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 he takes his, uh, your hand in his hand. The two of us, together, can see a dream of a sky point that sees the sky of the world except the world is below us, so it's hard to call it the sky, but I, we will bring them to the shit. <laughs> John, John is floundering. As, as he starts floundering, uh, 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 Liam uh, puts, a, puts a giant fucking finger on his lips uh, <laughs> and, and, and goes, John, please. Do not tempt me so. Not in my moment of weakness. <laughs> And then, uh, you know that my heart is still not deci decided. <laughs> and now my broad and muscular shoulders need, <laughs> need to make this decision not uh, not through through the whims of my heart alone, but also <laughs> through responsibility. <laughs> and he he looks up at you, eyes watering as. You feel another presence enter the garden. <laughs> you feel the weight of her move into the scene with utmost confidence. She strides in! Kane pulled aside. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> if it isn't my erstwhile rival, it's me! <laughs> Grab near Goldenrod! <laughs> <laughs> she sits down on the far side of the table, pitches a knee up to her side, and sort of expands out. It's a real shame what happened to your dearest papa, as you call him. But trust me, in your time of need, dear Liam, she leans in. Only I, a mysterious man from abroad, <laughs> can comfort you upon my stacks and stacks of natural resources that Skyborn so desperately needs. <laughs> and she's just looking over at John. Holy shit. <laughs> she's only manages to muster. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 scene darks uh, darkens a, a spotlight on Liam. This is to indicate an inner uh, monologue. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, 
if only I was uh, I was attracted to this disgusting man <laughs> only by the sense of responsibility and yet something in him <laughs> something in him tempts me so to like come back to the scene <laughs> Robin, you look at them in front of you. Your best friend is in peril. The two men that are fighting over her, God, they're... One of them. A land baron from afar. Here to... Here to communicate with the people of Sky Point. Representing not only the dangers of the outside world, but representing somebody who could so easily be tinged with foreign interest. It is the fear, it is the deepest fear of those within Sky Point that those that extend hands most readily are those that have gathered wealth and they view Sky Point as just another coin to add to their coffers. Gravnir Goldenrod, you've heard his name. You know he's a great real estate developer and you worry about why he might be here. Meanwhile, John Geist didn't provide a name, so She's John Geist in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> John Geist, on the other hand, born and raised here, but just the same. He's put pressure time and time again to not only allow Liam to rise to the occasion, uh, but also pressure to unite their two houses together into one. You look at him. Not so innocent either. Liam dramatically looks away and bites his knuckles. <laughs> Curse these outsiders. <laughs> the comfort you really need perhaps could be found in the arms of someone close. Someone who's always been there. <laughs> beside you. That you've never quite noticed. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm supposed to say something about that, but the original script is like a little homophobic here, so I'm not. Just registering <laughs> that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, am I gonna get shot for this? He yells over to CEO Fun. No, keep going, you're doing great! <laughs> Thanks, okay, carry on. <laughs> ah, Roba. <laughs> you, were, you were always there in my time of need. <laughs> But who, perhaps, do you think is this person that <laughs> whose arms wait for me? <laughs> for if they are indeed here, they have never presented themselves to me. <laughs> Maybe they are le afraid. <laughs> <laughs> the only arms that you need to consider here and now are the wonderful waiting arms of Goldenrod down below. My dear, should we travel back to the world below, you will become a shining star descending down to the people there. You will make their eyes turn to Sky Point when they realize that an angel fell down and graced the world that they live upon. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> You don't. The only arms that you need are to descend into the sweet arms of... Oh, right, you all wouldn't necessarily know this term. Mother Earth. <laughs> Everyone takes burn. Everyone takes burn. Actual real ass burn. <laughs> she holds her hand out. <laughs> John, John pauses he's like, shit, this is getting kind of intense for me. <laughs> uh, Liam, oh. Liam dramatically stands up and turns away, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> almost speaking to them uh, over, over his shoulder, uh, going, <laughs> is this, is this all my time of need and despair represents to you all? <laughs> A, a moment of weakness to uh, exploit no, your no. flattery will will not uh, will not <laughs> your flattery will not work with me no, I, no. 
need to no. time to think. And he, <laughs> he fucking storms out. No! It's it's not an opportunity. It's not an opportunity. It's oh my god, there she goes. Damn it! <laughs> you did this! He turns over! And uh 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 Gold uh, Goldenrod turns back his uh I did nothing of the sort. I understand that the customs of this place are a little unusual to ones such as myself, but above all else, I expected some common courtesy. So unhand me! <laughs> uh, you notice her? You Barbarous notice her? men. <laughs> <laughs> you notice her uh, pick up the uh, the point of her cane, and uh, she's going to try to uh, drive it forwards into uh, John Geist's gut. Boom! Uh, the attack oh, boom, digs in, and uh, you notice that uh, she's, uh, you know, put that same marker on <laughs> that, uh, that she does sometimes. Ah! Stumbles backwards. Ah! Damn it, Al, that actually hurt. <laughs> um, and then she turns and is like, well, at the very least, I can recognize where and uh, where I am needed and where I am not wanted. And where I am needed now is at the side of my beloved. She stomps off and uh, uh, exit scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, meanwhile, uh, when uh, when uh, this was happening, yeah. Uh, so Liam, you know, stormed yeah. off the scene, but uh, yes. like whispered to Pixie. Yeah. And basically, goes like, okay, so we we already established that there will be assassinations attempts. Yes. If you are an assassin in cover, you have uh, all the excuses in the world to shoot me repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's gonna go to a seat. <laughs> She thinks she's like, hmm. no, I think I can spin this. Yeah, good, good pass. Uh, you pass by CEO Five is like, wow, just starting to realize I picked the goon, but uh, hey Liam, I'm pretty sure I killed your dad. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you reckless motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> you will rue the day. <laughs> <laughs> Compulsion exit scene, and John actually looks over to you, Rob, and like. Okay, well. Are, are you okay? Yeah, fuck, that actually hurt, man. Something weird's happening. She did something to me. She went above and beyond what the scene called for. Yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a way we can get her to screw up if it's not caught on camera. Oh, I, interesting. What are you, what are you putting down? I mean, there's usually not, I missed my chance, but there's usually not a shot of, like, underneath the table, unless there's a right. bomb there or something, yeah. in which case there is to build suspense. Yeah. But if you, like, kick her, maybe she'll mess up a line. Oh, like, actively interfere. Also, you're, like, really familiar with this film stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I... I... I've seen this movie before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lots of oh, nice. lots of time. Yeah, no, uh, I, streaming services. I, I just saw clips of it on like i7. Yeah, we we don't need to talk about <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no, cool. I'll I'll try. I guess I'll try to throw her lines off. I wonder if we can get her to mess up. There's there's probably something with what you said. She went above and beyond what was required in the scene, right? It seems, mm -hmm. I think your original, like, push, like, what you were throwing out before, I get what you were saying, because, like, that would have worked on me, or, like, honestly, probably anyone else in the room, we would have instantly picked, like, to be the, to be the heroine that dies and everything, but, like, I'm gonna be honest, she's kind of extra as hell. Maybe we could draw her in the other, direc uh, other direction. Like, I don't know if this is the type of thing you can overact, but, like, do, it, it doesn't her performance, like... I don't know, man. It like eradicates subtlety or whatever. There's <laughs> huh. like no no nuance there. <laughs> if, so you're saying if she gets really into it and hams yeah. it up and steals the spotlight, maybe that'll count as breaking yeah, exactly. breaking the rules of this reflection. Like, she said she said the thing, right? She said the thing about um about how like novelty is about choosing blah, 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 blah. She chose the safest option for herself. She chose the toxic male lead. 
it's not saying like play it up and shit. We got to make her play it up in a way that she. Sorry, I'm a poet, so like this is. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like subtlety is an art form, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's totally trampling on a, a great uh, movie, but yeah, drawing all the attention away from the underlying themes of yeah, just two friends who are maybe something. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, you're good. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. Let's let's try to act on this. <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> walk your way back into this room as you um uh. CO5's like, okay, and the scene advances. Um, Pixie like, oh yeah, okay, this is my cue. She sort of moves her way over. <sighs> Hi, it's me, your disapproving mother. <laughs> Hello, mother. Um, How are you holding up? Uh, not well, your father is dead. <laughs> 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 Leo turns away dramatically, bites his knuckles, and like, as expected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that you're extremely into this because I'm finding it hard with the threat of death. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, um, it's the most unfortunate thing, but now that we're in this incredibly tight political position, you don't have a choice anymore, Liam. Even if your heart won't allow it. Sorry, I'm getting into this. This is fun. Uh, even if your heart won't allow it. You need you need to marry. And soon. We need we need the clout, Liam. We need to do it for the clout. <laughs> but even so, even if I do not follow my heart and its whims, then my decision is yet so difficult. For you see, mother. They both represent different things. One is the security of the home, the familiarity of the homeland, and the other is the adventure, but the risk of investing outside of our predispositions. <laughs> Pixie, Pixie just goes, I don't know, rub them both then. They both seem kind of like jerks. And then she feels the, she feels the, 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 the ASP bubble start to contort. And she's like, I mean, <clears throat> I understand the weight and significant, the significance of the scenario that you're going through. It's, it's very compelling. Um, <laughs> she rubs her forehead. She's like, okay, in that case, get closer to both of them. Try to understand, see where your heart truly does lie. And at the very least, it will buy us more time to decide on what will become of our beloved Skypoint. <laughs> Liam um, takes both of Pixie's hands in his. Uh, the difference in size is ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mother, I know that we never saw eye to eye. But for the future of this family, I need your family. help. <sighs> Fine. Fine. I'll... I will tolerate your flights of fancy wherever they <laughs> might lead. We are both grieving, after all. <laughs> <laughs> Liam pulls her in so that they touch uh, foreheads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait. Wait a second. Liam, my beloved daughter. Look out! And she shoves you backwards as you don't backwards. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, CEO Five appears at the uh, head of your table. He was feigning to be a waiter, and in this moment, he's like, "By the way, literal, actual, by name, Geist Corp sends its regards." <laughs> down, picks up a pistol and aims it at you. <laughs> oh, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh well this would be the per uh liam is not gonna do anything because no. this would be the perfect moment for one uh one of the uh potential love interests to come in and say oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so uh liam is gonna be as useless as physically possible and just <clears throat> put a hand to his forehead almost like he was gonna faint <laughs> oh my god uh you see john look over at you robin and you see compulsion look at the two of you uh Give me, oh. 
give me a uh, roll to die and then a roll to do. Okay, John Geist. No, he's not ready. He's a poet, not an actor. Oh my, Robin. <gasps> okay, hold on, hold on. Robin knows this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Robin. You see, almost like, you you feel your reflection actually speak up next to you. She's gonna move in and take the bullet for him. That'll give her a chance to drape herself dramatically over the guy. Don't give her that opportunity. You're quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and... oh, this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? movie will no longer be about yearning, it'll be about action! <laughs> <laughs> and Robin runs forward and tackles this goon. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Give me a roll to do. <laughs> you, you tackle the goon as Pixie unloads her minigun on him at the same time. <laughs> He just hits the ground and you find yourself standing there. And Compulsion stands up and walks in, opening her mouth like, Well, my dear, that was truly a fright. And John is going to roll to try to intercede. <laughs> oh my god. Just, you have a realization. As it stands, Compulsion, she's... She's gonna drape herself across Liam anyway! Oh shit! <laughs> Robin, you have a moment! Give me another roll to do. It... Okay. <laughs> we need to see if you remain rolling well. Okay. 17, you disengage yourself from uh, CEO 5. What do you do? Heart is being torn asunder. <laughs> If it really must be a choice between these two, neither of them shall have you. <laughs> <laughs> and I draw my sword. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see we're going the action movie route then. Interesting. <laughs> she pitches her cane downwards and is going to, uh, she, uh, oh god, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is how she's gonna do it. Uh, she aims her sword and she's like, well, well, well. It looks like those in Sky Point still have some fight left in them after all. She shields you, Liam, with her body and is like, for my lady's honor, I would be happy to oblige. <laughs> Robert, my dearest friend, how could you destroy our bond of uh, trust like this? <laughs> you were present when, during, during my earliest of birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been there, and this, we have the strongest bond, so this is in character. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps, like, glancing at CEO 5. <laughs> she hasn't been... No, you're doing good! Yeah, from the heavens yet, No, so. it's still in character. Like, you guys are doing great, honestly. <laughs> I knew uh, there was more to their connection. <laughs> uh, compulsion is going to, uh... Aim a shot. Oh my god, that's a crit oh. fail. Okay. You can tell Compulsion has the bottom of her cane, and she is aiming it up at your head, Robin. Give me a roll to do. Oh my god. Okay, Robin. You can tell she's about to mark you with the same thing that she just marked John Geist with. The splitting. She's aiming it at the core of your body. You can catch... The, 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 you can catch your cane right now and redirect it, deflect it, or aim it wherever you want. What do you do? Ooh. I, I look at my best friend who I've shared these many years with. And, man, I can't tell what's going on in that brain, but I hope he understands what I'm about to do. <laughs> <laughs> I parry her cane 
so that it strikes Liam. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! The chicane whips around and bonk! Hits Liam. <laughs> no! My love! What have I done? <laughs> No, 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 not like this. Not like this. Look at what you did to me, you hussy. <laughs> he, he arcs backwards and dramatically is like, doctor, doctor, I need a doctor. He runs out. Hi, I just happen to be a doctor. <laughs> As he moves over and he's like. <laughs> Liam gently brushes John Guy's face. Oh, my dearest Dr. John. <laughs> it seems that I am being betrayed on all sides. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, the only real betrayal that a person can have is, uh, if their heart betrays them. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over to you, Robin, like, not good. <laughs> That's not doing anything for you. <laughs> Pixie does the wavy hand, like, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold on, I'm gonna get to work. Uh, he, he, um, oh boy. He, uh, he sets to work and, uh, Compulsion ran outside and, uh, you watch her do something really interesting. You watch her out of the corner of your eye as John, uh, tends to your wounds and it's, uh, very dramatic. The, uh, the romance music swells as, uh, as, your uh your your stab wound is uh dressed by the uh the male lead B and um Compulsion watches this happen and you watch as something splits out of John touches down behind him I clear the mark and then she walks over one step at a time and just grabs the split version of like yanks him over here and uh, you watch us in the corner. She just whacks him with the cane repeatedly until boom, he disappears. <laughs> we don't need any extras. Uh, give me a roll to do. Uh, who? Uh, both of you. Oops. Both of me? Uh, Robin and Liam. Yeah. You noticed that she tapped her cane on the floor earlier to call those attributes out. It seems like something that she can voluntarily begin, but that happened automatically on its own. Oh. Uh, she she makes her way back there, chills outside the scene, and the story advances. <laughs> Liam, it is winter now. <laughs> the brilliant buds of love have fallen from the bush and all that remains is twisted gnarled vine what exists within you is no longer just love it has become something grotesque yet beautiful in itself when one ponders a garden they do not only see the flowers they see all the unsightly things, the worms, the roots that support that brilliant bouquet. Right now, your love, though it no longer flowers, has become something deep and abiding. Also, you're sick and dying. <laughs> <laughs> you have gotten terminally ill. <laughs> you, you, feel, you feel your body grow grow heavy as the scene rearranges itself you three gather up in the garden once more looking at a, a nearby bush a metaphor honestly for what's happening in the narrative right now <laughs> and um uh the three of you converse what twisted irony that by <laughs> avoiding the bite of le cancer i would simply succumb to look and say. <laughs> <laughs> Symbolic. <laughs> Pixie nodding repeatedly, just like, um, right, um, I suppose this is the, uh, right, 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 right. <clears throat> my, uh, 
My foolish yet beloved daughter. Yes, mother. There is only so much time left to get married. You are not long for this world. You, in your final moments, can tie a brilliant tie, saving our family and their future, potentially saving Skypoint. I only ask that you choose before you are taken from this world, unlike a bud at the end of fall that hasn't bloomed. <laughs> Liam once again turns away dramatically and bites his knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like what you're doing there. <laughs> you ask this of me, mother. But, but alas, I feel that in my final moments, my heart has become more honest with me. And perhaps <laughs> a different, less <laughs> strat strategic option has pre presented itself to me. But I dare not speak of its name. Who? Who? Whose name ensorcels your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ensorcels, nice. <laughs> Quickly, before you tragically die. <laughs> uh, Liam uh, says nothing, yet in this moment of un unspoken love for the tradition and the needs of the family could not, uh, could not allow so uh, something like this to be. And there, therefore, he cannot br uh, bring himself to say out loud, out loud. But his eyes do not lie, Robin. <laughs> you know it to be true. <laughs> no. I object. Sacré <laughs> 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 All this time, all of the dates we've been on, the candlelit dinners. The helicopter flights by moonlight. You're telling me it was not my eyes that you were peering into. You are looking into my eyes and seeing upon them the mirror, the portrait of another person's soul. <laughs> she flares her oh, body up, God. puffing out the frame. So Liam, t uh, Liam, because uh, he rolled relatively well, uh, yes. picking up on what Robin was putting down earlier, and since he's going to die soon, um basically goes uh, like hope and see uh, hoping that compulsion will uh be forced to play up the game because you know she likes to be yeah. super extra yeah. alas poor fool of a tycoon you were not dating me but my twin sister <laughs> <laughs> and i will ask basically I, what i'm trying to do is to do a thing where the clone is in the bed dying <sighs> And I coming to the scene from behind, uh... <laughs> you're bet- oh... You're trying to- Give me a roll to do. <laughs> oh boy. Robin? Uh, yeah, could I get oh, support yeah. from Robin? Because A, you know, she sets it up too. It was all Jackson's idea, by the way. That's what- Oh my god! Problem. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so here's how we're gonna do this. Liam, give me a roll to do first. Okay. Okay, that's also, perfect. Also, yeah. what you could do is, uh, can't you tag a prop for free? I can tag a prop for free. You just tag, uh, tag the clone tag... as a prop. <laughs> yeah, I tag the clone as a prop. Uh, okay, uh, the, clone, <laughs> the clone does not exist yet because she isn't convinced. She, she hears you and she looks at you and she picks up what you're putting down. She looks over to you, Robin, and uh, she, she... Uh, you, no, you wait, watch. I know Whoa. what to tag as a prop. The Whoa. projector. To create the scene even more, to ham up the scene even more than Halo Projector to be in, like on like literally the door behind Compulsion to like ha to like is essentially tempt her even more. I tag it as a prop. Oh uh, my god! Okay. Uh, yeah, it's one d six, right? Yes. Okay. It's one d six. You pass oh, a ten. <laughs> you pass a ten. So here's how this is gonna go. Compulsion pauses in place. Your Twin sister? Why? I never believe something so preposterous. There's... There's no way the movie goes like that. Right? 
she looks over at you, Robin, and you realize something in that split second. She hasn't seen this movie. <laughs> How has she been this good? <laughs> I have been around through a lot of a lot of worlds. <laughs> Our trends in a specific direction, Robin. <laughs> she looks this at you. Is... This is our last chance to make our cases for Liam's love. <laughs> the, the real, the real Liam, not this twin sister nonsense. Sure. You, uh, you see compulsion trying to pivot from this. She has a moment of consideration. Robin, can you give me a roll to do? You see her pick up her cane again. She is about to pitch it downwards towards the world. And before the timer elapses that automatically spawns one of the clones, she's about to spawn it right now. You don't know why. Do you let her do it? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> she's trying to wriggle out of this. Oh, God. I, I think I'd let her do it because that's the plan, even though... Mm. You, uh, you see, you see the split happen, and I'm going to tint the, uh, this is the clone, Liam. Yeah. And she gestures over as the split happens. It's like, oh, my, there are two of them. Lucky for me, she strides forwards. The one that I'm in love with isn't afflicted by a deadly illness. <laughs> She's trying to kill you off and spare the clone. What do you do? <laughs> turning the plan against us. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, however, however, uh, uh, yeah, since the clone is part of the plan, it is technically an ally. Therefore, since I am in Bastion, because I've been locked in Bastion this whole time, I'm unable to survive. I interpose myself and I will yes, to my love. <laughs> I fucking like dip her. <laughs> uh, uh, give me a uh, give me a roll to do. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Attack. Attack the prop. Yeah. Attack the prop of the clone and uh, roll to do. Uh, plus one d six. Plus one d six. Pass a 20. Only an 18. Uh. Only an 18. Huh? Pixie is gonna throw in. Pixie is. Yeah! She's like, only an 18, huh? This will not go to plan. And Pixie's like, my. My daughters, plural, including the secret ones that I have for political reasons. <laughs> she speaks up. No, you can't. You can't fight over that! And she jumps in and literally just tumbles around with compulsion. And in this moment, everyone, except for Liam, naturally, loses track of which Liam is the real Liam! <laughs> they pause. Oh, crap. <laughs> Pixie like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, compulsion looking back and forth the trope what? isn't even from this genre <laughs> well we're left with an unfortunate reality we're headed towards the final scene one of you guys has to be dying in a hospital bed <laughs> <laughs> pixie like looking over at robin okay i'm gonna be honest are you can you tell the real liam apart from a fake liam uh, okay, I'm gonna try something. Uh, okay. <laughs> Which one of you is real? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they probably both say at the same time, it's me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Compulsion is literally rolling to puppet uh, puppeteer the fake one right now. Uh, if she rolls back... <gasps> <laughs> I see. Today is the day that I'm the clown. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
something happens. Something key and crucial to this exact scenario. Compulsion twitches her eye over as she's like, okay, if I do this convincingly enough, I could probably pitch this towards they're both diseased and dying. She looks between both of the compuls uh both of the clones, uh, the real one getting confused in the jumble. And you Robin, you ask which one of you is the real one. And uh uh Bryn, would you mind saying what Liam says again? Oh, Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not doing your thing. I'm just uh, saying what no. he said again. Okay. Um, yes. He said, it's me, of course. Ah, uh, and then the other one says, it's me, of course. <laughs> 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 However, some might say that if you paid attention, <laughs> my mother does not have a French accent. <laughs> 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 I was the fake one all along. <laughs> Compulsion of political intrigue and <laughs> Yes, it's <What's> French. <laughs> Everyone pings burn <laughs> as you feel in this very moment. Pixie hopping in. <clears throat> yes, of course. Uh, that person. Uh, this one right here. The fake. Uh, by the top one's real um uh, this this or the top one is liam the other one's the clone no let me phrase yeah. it like this uh she's like this individual is uh from a um assorted affair best left to the imagination with a, a denizens a few city below that's why i was so open-minded about this stuff <laughs> 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 leans over come on robin get in <laughs> uh, um and I, uh, uh, she takes out a sharpie and starts <laughs> and writes on on counterman cancer, <laughs> <laughs> and the metaphorical blade of cancer <laughs> is now descending upon you. What's She's the fuck's to, going like, on? <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's trying to bait uh, uh, Compulsion. Compulsion is and, going to... Compulsion, like, looks over at you, and she, like... She she sees you squaring up, and she's like... So, you'd satisfy yourself with the twin sister? A faker? <laughs> you, you draw her blood here now. Um... <laughs> Compulsion. Yes. Compulsion squares up and moves into the area. Now, I think I can still pivot this one last time. Uh. You brandishing that weapon here and now. You pretended to be a best friend this entire time, but you have secretly been an agent all along, haven't you? Look at that blade. All the evidence is right there. That ain't a metaphor. That's a very literal thing. Visual metaphor counts. <laughs> Absolutely. You name the terrorist organization cancer before I'm just capitalizing on it, my friend. <laughs> and as the shadow sister, it is my job to be the, the bodyguard. I'm gonna tag in Robin as a prop, yeah. take her out of the scene as like a oh we fight off off of the scene. Therefore, I can't be the main character because I'm not in the final scene. <laughs> 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 she closes up and she's like, well, in that case, looks like it all wheels back around to Agent Danger with you World 12 Cretans. No matter what, can't stop it from being a comedy or an action movie, huh? Well, simply put, I am excited to come face to face with you when- And you grab her and just dip! <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap, <laughs> <laughs> you head back there and compulsion is left there in the silence. It's like Pixie. <clears throat> and that leaves the unfortunate reality. She exhales and thinks heavily on what she knows about Skypoint, its future, its goals, its isolationist tendencies. And she knows how Le Intense was always meant to end. 
She understands the depths of this brilliant piece. Given time, it was an inevitability that Skypoint would give up its heart and its love, opening itself to the world at large. Wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> it was an inevitability that the long isolation would come to an end, and we would need to make concessions and sacrifices as a part of it. Even should our heart, should our love die, struck down by some horrific disease, somewhere deep in our hearts, we would hold our pride close to our chest. The scene advances. The projector you tagged earlier kicking things ahead. Compulsion forced into a scenario where she's looking over a clone Liam dying in a bed. The clone Liam pops, expiring as, <laughs> as she looks down, mouth hanging open slightly. It was an understanding that for those who once lived and loved in Skypoint, we would need to learn to love the world at large, and in doing so, embrace the death of the culture and the city we loved so much. Even if we stick to our beloved identity, there is little that we can do in the face of something so... la intense. <laughs> CEO 5 is like, fucking makes me cry every time, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> you understand. We could have been happy together. <laughs> <laughs> you understand we're personally responsible for the, like, integration of Skypoint into, like, yeah, that, I, uh, it's fine, man. <laughs> he pops him on the shoulder. <laughs> as as uh, you feel the situation and La Intense genuinely come to a hazy close. And, let me reveal you all again. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> and then, you feel the hold that this place had on you actually lighten up a little bit as compulsion sort of pauses she's like well played i think if i had one more move there i could have brought it back in my favor but the um the surprise twist twin ending i thought this movie was supposed to be classy oh it is it said you probably didn't get it <laughs> <laughs> co5 sits there as Pixie's like, I have never been more grateful to uh, have had the experience of somebody who moved from Skypoint express how miserable it was as an experience to have guys show up there. So, uh, yeah, no, metaphor not lost on me, actually. See, I was sort of the same. <laughs> she sits down, a lot of similar themes. I don't know, I could connect to it on a deep level. Damn. <laughs> John's like, ah, shit. Okay. So, boss man. Yes. When's the, uh, when's the ESP end? Oh, come on, guys. Do we want to go another round? I can spin the roulette wheel again. <laughs> it, like, looks through the room. John is like, if I learn any more details about, uh, the company that I work for indirectly via exposure to you, I'm pretty sure I'm going to snap. So for your own sake, let's not, all right? <laughs> Okay. Well, we fig uh we filled the re uh, requisite quota and um well, I'm feeling pretty strong right now. CO5 like continues bouncing on his heel. Shall we continue the fight? Well, that depends. If somebody doesn't make good on a certain wager that we agreed on. Compulsion sort of stands there. She's lost in thought. Hmm. Complete surrender. She genuinely weighs her options. She thinks back on Vinter, everything that happened previously. She almost lets it swell and build in her head as she, um, sort of sighs. I think 
That would be the wise tactical move in this case. Hmm. She uh, tilts her head to the side. But that wouldn't exactly be a surrender, now would it? I'm still using you all for my own advantage. I intend at this point to seek refuge with Anopia. So, I must ask a secondary question. What does a surrender look like to you? Oh boy. She, she looks at the uh she looks at the arranged people in front of you. She is she seems to be genuinely asking this question. It's a strange thing that she'd put to words. But uh yeah, it seems like she is expecting you to answer what a surrender what what do you expect from her at this point? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, goodness. that's way above my pay grade. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Who has the most authority here? Uh, that would be you, Robert. That would be you, yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, you technically charged, me, but charged. like... <laughs> yeah, but you're not Opia, though. <laughs> the question did not was not asked to you, see. <laughs> <laughs> um... Be, you, uh, become our prisoner and you won't be harmed. That we promise. <laughs> we're really good guys so you can believe it come your prisoner and I won't be harmed listen you see that you've been like wanting to seek refuge but in your little test of our value what you're doing right now is endangering your refuge and the refuge of every citizen in this city stop it <laughs> that's what surrendering is stop being a threat Stop. Stop being a threat. All right, then. She walks forward slowly. <clears throat> In that case, surrendering is not something that I can do here. It is something that must be done with a little more authority. She sort of like looks at each of you. I will not endanger your lives directly, but most of the processes addressing the city are autonomous at this point. As such, if you wish me to stop being a threat, I will tell you how to stop them. She looks around the room. Does that sound amenable? Y um. Yes. So, that, was, that was pretty good. I think. That's <laughs> I, I, I really <laughs> like to talk to my superiors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it easy? Uh, if your associates have breached adequately deep into the derelict, yes. It should be somewhat simple. She smiles. Oh god, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, agents of Opia, I am looking forward to seeing how you treat prisoners. It's an almost blood-curdling smile as you um as the area around you fades. And you see, sprawling out on all sides, you find yourself back in, um, you find yourself back in Fuse City. Most of the evacuation has gone away. You've heard an immense amount of violence. Uh, like, you've heard an immense amount of violence reported on your comms all at once. Argos has been fighting his battle, and you pop back up onto the systems all simultaneously. Well, I'm gonna dip and see if I can handle, uh, help handle things out in Fuse. Thank you all for a most wonderful time. 
Thanks for See the you. assist, bro. He starts to run off in this direction That's and then jumps and disappears as John pauses, turns, looks, he's like, hey, uh, okay. Um, first of all, is Opia hiring? Uh, second of all, um, that that's not that's actually not that important. Um, he sees where CEO five ran off to. Right. Uh, how do I put this? Um, Geist is going to turn this entire operation into a big op to uh, explain why um, they're the uh, defenders of the city and uh, OPR all traitors. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that uh, that's coming. Sorry, I just I, after we what we've been through, I realize uh, that man will leave me to die, and you guys probably won't. So uh, hire me. But regardless, uh, yeah, I don't want that to necessarily happen to you guys. You seem decent. <laughs> he like looks over at uh, the arranged people in front of him. So yeah, um, if I can assist with like maybe clearing that up, that uh, I definitely can. But at least for now. Um, I'd say letting your superiors know. Right. <laughs> right, we should do that. <laughs> you, you managed to patch through as... Verona actually comes in on the line. Hi, Verona here. How's it going? Are they about to call the board of directors? <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I think we do. I think yeah. we do call the board of directors. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> the director, he's gonna direct you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Uh, these uh -oh. t these two are the ones who answer. Uh, hi, how's it going? Uh, you were the ones in the weird ESP bubble. How did that go? Oh. Uh, we captured compulsion. Holy yeah. shit! Here with oh my us goodness! And surrendered. Holy shit! Uh, That's like okay, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, you basically fill them in on the situation, and Brona's like, uh, damn, okay, um... So Geist is just going to try and make this into a massive pl publicity stunt to run our names through the, through the yes, dirt and uh, take credit. Hold on, let me, let me patch John Geist. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, hi, uh, Opia guys. uh, I think I, I think I shot at you once, like, a while back, that's my bad, um, hey, so, uh, basically... The entire situation as it was laid down was um, basically uh, get in there, let Opie do most of the work, hop in at key pivotal moments, capture footage, lose some guys, so that you know we got we got sympathy, brave, yeah, brave sacrifices and all that, and then uh, spin in our favor and say that uh, you guys were working with the demons. Um, so effectively, it's you guys have camera yeah. footage and we don't. Uh, basically, yeah, and. Um, Okay. Uh, I, I got a weird, dumb idea. No. Uh, I, I, I want to submit my dumb idea to the board of directors. Uh, go on, Liam. For review. Okay. Uh, so, we have somebody here who probably knows where all the drones and cameras are, right? I mean, yes, that isn't hard to acquire information. Yes. Okay, yeah, so, like, but, like, he knows exactly, like where everything is. What about, like, that's his first job for OPR, is to get rid of all the footage. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, this is a guy's boy? Uh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's like, I think that'll work, but, uh, uh, I, I think the easiest way to do it will be going to, like, well, guys does a studio nearby. Uh, I'm pretty sure literally everything that's been put together here is getting cut together over there. Uh, okay, so they already have, they're already in real time oh, yeah, putting absolutely. it together. Uh, yeah, no, no doubt, no freaking doubt about that. We, uh, and uh, if we just storm saw you guys. Geist HQ, they're just going to record it and use it as proof that we're traitors. Yeah, pretty much. So, as he slowly <laughs> enters, Will Smith presents Spose towards <laughs> John Geist. <laughs> I see, uh, I feel, I don't know about sending this, <laughs> this young man alone into enemy territory. Uh, John's like, yeah, no, uh, uh, he actually looks over. He looks at you, Robin. <laughs> like, I mean, there's some spare suits lying around. Uh, listen, they're gonna put out a broadcast kind of soon. Um, up for some espionage? If you, th if you, th if this squad here can 
acquire suits and sneak in to mess up their broadcast. I have an idea. Hmm. Well, <laughs> you helped us. I guess that's only fair. <laughs> and I am kind of a pretty good actor. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm pretty bad at uh, discretion, so maybe uh, I I'll just get compulsion back to HQ, I guess. <laughs> that makes sense. You're a little bit large to fit in the suits. Um, I have an idea, Verona. Yes. We have someone who specializes in broadcasting on our end, don't we? We do. Hmm. He's kind of busy right now. He's a little busy. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I'm... <sighs> I'm literally right next to him. All I need to do is get an A skeleton approves. <laughs> uh, actually, how about this? We can do we can do a coordinated effort. Uh, Robin, here's your official orders. Take over the broadcast. Uh, take over the broadcast. Say that Opie is here and is saving the day, and I will get a garbled sound clip of A saying A skeleton approves. <laughs> and I'll call Argos. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> how? Uh, so you that's... guys are going to want to pick up some of these Geist guard uniforms, put them and on, sneak in there, <laughs> and you're going to follow the Geist boy into Geist HQ and pray that he's not betraying you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work, uh, pacifying compulsion, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, it's literally, we're all working double duty here. You finish a pyromancer and now it's off to perform a broadcast. I look What's forward to What's to do with compulsions? Uh, Liam volunteered to take Compulsion back to OPHQ, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. be okay? Make sure that she doesn't get into any of our computer or hardware. Oh my god, yes, put her in a box or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Liam realizes that he have, maybe has signed up for, like, something way above his pay grade. Right <laughs> uh, I'll try to send over, I'll ask Argos to send over any spare troops that he has, but... <laughs> Our ghost, ghost is going to fucking love that. He's seconds away from catching fire. <laughs> well, good luck, team. <laughs> and then there's a clanking. John's like, hey, so, uh, first day on the job, but, uh, is that an, is that an unreasonable ask? Is that a reasonable ask? Either way, we're going to do it. Yeah, okay, let's go make a movie. <laughs> Again. Again. He starts to walk off in this direction. Pixie, you got this. Bumped Pixie up. leans on your shoulder and is like, Hey, if you got, like, anything to say to you-know-who, you know, if you got anything to say, important to say to you-know, you know. <laughs> wink, uh -huh. wink. I mean, Robin is way too distracted by this pretty girl <laughs> winking at her to understand. Oh, okay, I must have misread the signals. <laughs> anyway, might be your last chance. Wink, wink. <laughs> you look over at <laughs> <Compulsion laughs> and William standing next to each other. <laughs> um. By the way, your acting was actually rather incredible. <laughs> is that is that so bad? That's a Liam, that's a Liam, yeah. <laughs> you are not so bad yourself. <laughs> We're intense. It's happening in real life. <laughs> Your love, Robin! <laughs> uh, be careful. And we don't rebound it. <laughs> com compulsion, remember. Yes. You're officially our prisoner, so you. Mm -hmm. Uh, no. Don't break out. <laughs> That's an order from me. I have the highest authority here. <laughs> well, if it's an order, I believe. Uh, Liam's gonna briefly, uh, briefly come to Robin and uh, put two hands on each of her shoulders. They're way too big, so it's kind of weird. But <laughs> um, and he goes, "Okay, I know it's stressful, but remember." It's just like the day that I that I that I took you out on the town, okay? You got this. The hardest the hardest part is to commit to it and make the first step. Listen, I know it's hard to believe in yourself. But I I assure you, if you could see yourself the way I see you, you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey Robin, hey Robin, hey Robin, hey Robin, hey yeah. Robin. How's Seven that Robin, making you feel? Robin is <laughs> screaming. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, <laughs> what did you say, Jay? Oh, oh, Robin, how you feeling, Robin? <laughs> oh, let's find out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Roll those dice. I. I will try my best to be that and good, like you think. It's not about what I think. You already are it. It's just a matter of any boops or nose perception. Then he ruffles Wait. your hair. All right, Jeff, <laughs> you're going to be late. You're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you wave goodbye as Liam disappears into the distance for now despite the setup Robin the job in front of you is significantly less perilous than the one that you left behind you felt for a moment your presence and your existence managed to avert the course of this uh, conflict though your brain won't necessarily let you believe that as you shift away and you feel liam head off in his own direction you get a strange sensation spreading through your gut as it almost feels like while this door is closing you feel like on some level this might be it's a funny thing they described it the other OB agents described it feeling that the world might end Feeling that somebody that you're bidding farewell to, this might be the last time you ever see them. And... Elsewhere in the world. <clears throat> Yo, Ace. Yeah. You actually work your way over to, uh, you work your way over to where, Sir, uh, Sir, Jesus, uh, Cass sent out their call. They, uh, they patch through. Voice sort of speaking up like, okay, let me bring you to the right map. <clears throat> kind of interesting. Uh, Compulsion just divulged a bunch of information that honestly, I'm not going to say she shouldn't share because apparently she's our prisoner, but uh, she's spilling her guts right now. Would you mind going over here and taking a look with I'm me? Not, I'm not on the map yet. I'm moving you. Okay, I'm moving we'll, you. We'll, let's make sure. Looking at the information <laughs> she's sharing. Yeah. Just Why? trust me. <laughs> I... You just show up and you look over at Cast. Cast like, uh, thanks for coming. Hold on, I gotta drop a Verona. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, long story short, we uh know where Compulsion's Fang is, and we know how to access it. Okay. Uh, this is of particular relevance to you. They mm -hmm. turn and look at you because, um, this is where that the whole a skeleton curse slash legacy is stored. Okay. Get rid of this so, uh, that. you mucked up the data earlier. That was good, but mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> nectar sort of waves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's like futzing around. I have waited so long to get into this thing. <laughs> she like lightly laughs, working on a keypad. As um, uh, Cass like looks at you. It's um. I think this is a decision that you should make for yourself. The hatch yeah. here hisses. 
and you and your squad, despite what they just said, descend into a large room. <clears throat> Place themselves here. As Nectar slides her way down and she's like, Okay, we've been given the basic... <clears throat> we've been given the basic construction to redirect every single demon that's being controlled by this fang. Functionally, the war on the surface should come to an end pretty soon. I just gotta get through this. Give me a little space to work. She gets to work as Cass, like, turns and looks at you. Um... Hmm. I guess to share a little bit of where I come from, um, uh, I functionally grew up with Decca, who's a person who's basically been, had his entire life ruined by this thing. They gesture their head over to the Fang. So, I've got a question for you. Right now, this Fang is built to contort the Coda in a very specific way. No matter what, a skeleton will reach popularity. A skeleton will reach notoriety. A skeleton will be a lauded and laureled individual. The Coda makes it possible by manipulating the literal shape of the world. Think of it like mass suggestion almost. No matter what, you can't avoid this fate so long as uh so long as this machine is doing that. For Decca, that was a heartbreaking concept that none of his accomplishments were genuinely his own, that people only liked his plays because, uh, well, mass brainwashing. So, we've been given a rare chance here. While we have control of this fang and while we have control of, over the derelict, you as a person can decide what being a skeleton means not only to you, but to every subsequent person. Figured at the very least you should be the one to weigh in on it. They smile at you gently. <laughs> Look. Is there a way to just make it not decide anything? Remo pretty much remove the entry? Yeah, that's a possibility. Look. It's a fucked up thing to control life this way. While <laughs> this probably played a part of it, I honestly think all of my accomplishments are still my own. Loving the self-confidence, they say, <laughs> expression lighting up. Um, they're like, <clears throat> uh, so, is that a for, remove the A-Skeleton curse from the machine, or against? I mean, probably, but before you remove it, there's probably some information we can glean from this. Oh, for sure. <laughs> they like, lean forwards. There's a, there's a lot of things with my existence, especially in this world, that's very interesting probably some other things that people altered. I don't know if this fang is what exactly controls those factors, but at least, you know, already has a connection, right? Yeah. This, the fang of compulsion primarily controls, like, uh, best way to put it is industry and growth. It is the need to get better and constantly improve. That has good sides and bad sides. Mm -hmm. Is there any way... <sighs> So Compulsion had access to this? Hmm. Yeah. She was the main one in control of it. I don't know why she suddenly handed us admin rights, but uh, something must have changed up on the surface. Does she keep notes on here? Uh, probably. You want me to look for them? Could you search up Laffadel on this computer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're going to, uh... That's a fun one. Okay. Uh, they, they search through the records. Uh, Nectar looks over his shoulder. Laugh it out, huh? Doesn't exactly ring any bells for me. Uh, God of humanity. Hmm. Um, cast like, huh. yeah, personal contact. Yeah. So it seems like, oh. It seems like Lafidel was doing a wide variety of different rituals to not only get in contact with the derelict, but uh, powers beyond. Yeah, it seems like Lafidel and Compulsion were in close communication. Yeah. I mean, of course. Look, there's a lot of interesting things about this man, but I just kind of wanted to know 
I think exactly what you said, just make it where none of that stuff can happen. If this world does ever end and there's another Ace Galatine, if I do die, I don't want them to at least experience the same thing. At least make their own name, own fate, own existence. <sighs> it's kind of... Okay. Yeah. You. It's a funny thing that you say. And as you say, you see Seagazer Sig kind of look off to the side and like... You see her uh, visibly like relax. It's it's a funny thing, and you get a you get a better sense of your partner in this moment as you look at her. This is a person who has functionally explained to you, she needs you to go and fight and kill Riddle on that staircase if she wants to live. She needs you to be that hero. She needs you to basically live the most miserable life that you could possibly live. But as you move forwards and you almost intentionally work to remove your hero status, you see a look of relief actually cross her face. It's yeah. her, the edges of her jaw relax and she's like, phew, okay. She look. pauses and lets you carry on. Look, this doesn't change anything. I'm still probably already set on the course that I'm going to go on, but everything that I've seen that I'm supposed to do, it's not very heroic, really. <laughs> Cast's expression brightens. Okay. I'm going to pull up every single exchange that Lafidel and um, uh, Compulsion had and share them, if that's okay. And I'll keep what happened with the ace thing between us i said come alone okay none of you can be snitches they <laughs> say looking at the room so you guys are like yeah far be it for me <laughs> brona like i didn't see anything mm. okay mm. so oh. question mm. sorry i'm not caught up yeah. with everything so does every pyromancer have a fang like this oh yeah uh-huh Where's laughters? Huh. Uh, you want to see laughters? I could show you. Seagazer actually says, and then holds a hand out to you. Okay. She, do you take it? Yeah. She yanks you upstairs. She hangs you upstairs as Cast gets to work downstairs. She pulls you up here. Sort of stands, squints, looks at the room around her. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Uh. Just move over to your right. Over to your right, a little further. A little further. A little further. At casual. There's a. There's a wall. Yeah, yeah. Stick your hand through it. Okay. Just jam it right in there, okay? Reach out, and now grasp. He does so. You grasp, and you hold on to something, and you feel uh, a pressure as... <laughs> you hold on to something and yank it free as you hold Say up by the back of her neck. And there you go. <laughs> Where are you Say remains hanging you, uh, here. I don't need to answer that question. I was told that if I inform others about my wall passages, they will discover them and use them for nefarious ends. <laughs> and you were just going to sit in there until when? <laughs> until a tactical moment availed itself. Okay. <laughs> Seagazer like looks over at Say. However, on the other hand, it seems I have been ratted out by by your other partner. Yeah. A horrific offense, one I will soon not forget. <laughs> they look at each other. <laughs> so there, if if you're looking for the one that's giving you the uh the processing power that we see down below, it's the thing that she's flinging around with her. So that's Laughter's Fang, technically? Technically, yes. 
It is a fang of uh, of utmost potency. I crafted it myself. So if these things have commands in them, do you mind telling me what commands that thing has in it? Only the ones that I've programmed so far, such as telling Eternity to stop moving and to kneel. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> well, that's nice. All right, say, you're coming for Let us. me back into the walls. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. It is where I belong. <laughs> it's not where you belong. It's more fun this way, okay? <laughs> Say, sort of like looks over at you blinking a few times. Fine. However, we will stop by the ki uh, the kitchen on the way up. I mean, sure, whatever. <laughs> Pleased. <laughs> Stefano is not around to currently stop me. <laughs> yeah, so I have to wait for Verona for medical service, but yeah, we'll be heading in that direction, I think. Probably. You, you turn yourself around, and you start to walk off in this direction as Say, like, looks across the way at Seagazer, and, like, Say seems to perceive Seagazer, Seagazer Say for the very first time, and Seagazer's like, huh. That thing staring at me. <laughs> you guys get along. <laughs> if you guys start being annoying, I'm gonna leave you both behind, okay? <laughs> it is what I would prefer, joining with the walls once more. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Be well, sad. you heard her. <laughs> Look. As you say. <clears throat> yes. Never mind. Say. Hmm? <laughs> it's, blink, blink. It's fine. I'm just glad you're here. Oh. <laughs> you see. You see her expression change, lighting up for a second, and then a look of genuine, actual bliss look uh, across her face as she gives her shrugs. It's like, keep up. Yes, yes. Your Your trio trails behind you. Hey, Brennan. We are entering the final scenes, but we have an important yes. decision to make. Hey, Brennan. Mm -hmm. It's time to decide what your future looks like. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. What do you do? Hey, uh, Stein. Yeah. Last time when you had to, like, stab the me that was becoming a tree. Yeah. What was the difference that made you understand that she was too far gone? Huh. Oh, boy. He, uh, scratches the back of his head. Well. I bring you over here. It almost seems to resonate with your own collapse of the living. Basil, you walk forwards. I don't know how to put it. It's like she was half mad with grief. You remember walking forwards up these long steps. You remember the sensations that welled in your chest looking at that person in the cage. It's the weirdest thing, I know they were just like keeping their riddle two around just for such an occasion like this, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of strange that things worked out the way they did. You feel your body arc forwards and you cut the front of the cage, offering a hand to her. She smiles and takes it. And the two of you leave together. You feel your bodies running as far as they could possibly be pushed, running and running across a world that had lost its life. It's just weird. The person I saw in front of me wanted that entire world to burn. 
regardless of how terrible what happened was. I don't know. That's not the... You tell me the tree uh, felt bad, but I know what I saw. You feel your vision again alight. A rain of bullets touching down on the pair of you. You see the figure in front of you, the same gentle smile as always. Offer herself willingly to the gnashing maw on your arm. Bounding and building outwards. In that moment, she sacrificed her life, intending very much to give you a chance to survive. And yet still, with all of that power, all you felt was that wish for the end. An ever-devouring tree spreading outwards and outwards and outwards, enough to drown the whole damn world. Well, could you put yourself in her shoes? Probably not. Sounds like you can, though. Imagine a world where the person you loved was kept in a cage just waiting to be slaughtered, and you were the one that had to do it. And then as soon as you thought that you had a chance of freedom, it's taken away from you. Does that world deserve to live in your eyes? Yeah, I'd probably be pretty pissed, to be honest. <sighs> this place is just as much collapse as it is Gnashing Maw, isn't it? He looks around. You say it out loud, and you know it to be true. That's why she's not with me. She's everywhere. I'm going to pull out another hunger out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Yeah, we need both sides. Yeah. You place your second hunger down. They both stare at you. You're not the same. But you are a part of the same story, right? They look at each other. One continuous path, life devouring life. It seems that the problem was last time was the wish that was made on the tree that was made. Hmm. They look at each other. So as long as the one making the wish isn't struck with grief, grief that would echo throughout world after world, then I don't see why this has to end as a tragedy. You would aim for reconciliation. I would aim for completion. And to what end? How will you accomplish this? It's simple. It's my wish. So you wish for completion? Yeah. Stein, Stein looks over at you. Completion of not only gnashing maw, completion of the cycle. Tying, tying a knot on the end for them too? For everyone. Lovely. Okay, some insane shit's about to happen. Cool. Uh, okay, so. You focus on your wish. As Stein pulls himself backwards. Outside. In the old world. <clears throat> Basilisk ideal, you feel a strange sensation, as if a wave of energy is traveling through your body. You're suddenly struck by that vision that everybody else felt, and uh, everyone watches as your body uh, pops. It explodes into goo. Charybdis on the front watches the same thing happen as these two basils simply detonate. They collapse and coalesce into an almost fluid, it runs together, mixing with flames and driving itself backwards. 
into the derelict and the derelict itself. <coughs> Over here. <coughs> the tree cracks and draws itself inwards. Bits of Collapse's legend almost solidifying. They draw themselves back into a singular point and thud. Something healthy, uh, heavy touches down on the ground. As the one who appears on everyone's comms isn't Basil. The one that comes back is Stein. And in his hand, he carries with him a grotesque weapon. Not Collapse, not Gnashing Maw, something in between and intertwined. He sort of hefts it up and onto his shoulder, looking at you. Basil, you hear his voice clearly. Him and him alone. Okay. Well, while you're aiming for completion, you guys sort your stuff out. Just tell me what needs to be done. I'll be your arms and legs. Hey, Basil, congrats, you're a sentient sword now. In the upcoming combats, you are controlling <laughs> this man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> like at this point, man, listen, we've done it all. Sentient weapon time. Following through on this. <clears throat> As promised, we continue to head towards the end of this. Oh. As... <laughs> Holy shit. On the roof. This exchange continues. This moment that Seder is paused, crushed in the air. Riddle has a momentary realization. Eyes igniting, her body arcs forward and she shoves her way towards the pair of them. As Seder reaches out a hand, Riddle tries to open her mouth to say the words that she needs to say before he goes, Hey, don't worry about it. Life's beautiful. And the pair of them vanish into nothingness. Riddle's body almost skids to a halt. She pauses in place as she thinks back, looking over at where Seder went. There's something missing. Another part either to her ESP or what was happening with Isaac that just never connected. She almost... Meditates on it for a moment, turns, sees Ace's signal move, looks down, sees where Mike is, pauses, exhales. <sighs> okay, just gotta fill in the gap. The hell was that? Um, she touches her comms and uh, sends out a message. Hey, um, Argus, uh, Seder, Seder grabbed, Seder grabbed Isaac and disappeared. Um, I don't know exactly where they've headed, but, uh, and she hears a crackle as over here. Argos, you see him. <laughs> Isaac appearing out of almost nothingness. Uh, like... He, he, Seder, and the lot just drop onto the ground. Seder feeling the grasp around him. Relax. His body ugh, draws itself back together and he picks himself up. Oh, holy shit, that was a close one. He like looks over at Argos and Fia. Hey guys. <laughs> lightly waves to him, uh, lightly waves to each of you. Fio pauses, looking over at you, Argos. Mm. Hi there. Hey. Nice of you to drop by. Yeah. Um, 
Didn't really How's it going, you there. two? Ah, it's going well enough. Uh, I should give you a warning. Kind of silly to say at this point, but I realize, um... Probably should have said it from the start. <laughs> he, uh, he smiles and looks at you and then waves a hand at Seder. Boom! Rolls across the ground backwards, almost fatally wounded. You might want to keep your distance. And he watches you as... You can tell, looking at Isaac, Fio can tell even more clearly than before, something's changed about this man. Different air, different energy. The man finds himself somewhere else. Trying to pull someone from the flame, feeling them disintegrate into pieces even between his fingers. They worm their way into his body, changing who he is fundamentally. A cord is struck, it moves deeper into his body. The flame isn't him, never was. The person looks up at him, disintegrating, moving away. He opens his mouth and says something simple. Who are you? To the salary man that threw his bike aside, to the man that sprinted into the fire, he can only muster a few words. The words of his friend. Just a normal guy. The person in his palms fades away. A normal man unable to do anything. He opens his hands as the flame begins to move around and take him as well. What do I want to be, huh? <laughs> Almost became a curse. As he comes back, he focuses his eyes, feeling that power spreading throughout his body. He looks at each of you. Step back and keep your distance. <laughs> I'm a fucking superhero. And that is where we're going to end tonight. Excellent work, everyone. Yeah, uh, next time, go. we start with uh, you guys fighting uh, Isaac. With the next fights getting set up, we are moving towards the finale. Thank you for staying late. Holy shit, oh, folks. Fucking <laughs> hell. Great fucking job, everyone. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> holy shit. Okay. With that, we got fan art. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm gonna... Boop. Uh, we don't have an Imgur, so I gotta... My god. Figure some stuff out. So, just let me do this. So, first off from uh, Rian, we have... Wait, let me stream it to you guys. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Aloha. Yeah, there we go. All right, first off, from uh, Rian, we have a Dillard. Uh, not a Dillard. Oh, oh wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong Pretty screen. Wrong screen. Fan art. That's the wrong fan art. Okay, there's the start. Sorry. Uh, poster from Dungeon Master Zero. Oh, Fuck really. yes. And then we have Dillard's 49 through 99. Oh, my God. Look at her card. Really Dillard 100. Yeah! 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 Oh my god, look at that shit. A lot of Good dills. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, from uh, Darwin, we have... Nice. Fuck yeah. Nice. There's then a from... trigger near your finger, pull it. Yo, sick! Yo, oh, the boy. Lug. Uh, Lug. And then, uh, we got cookies made from uh, Snack Daddy. Uh, oh, lovely. It's oh, fuck yeah. Heart. <laughs> uh, then we have a meme. Wait, let me let me let me see if I can. Perhaps zoom yeah, are you zoomed extra zoomed out on any of these? Like, like it, life's hard. Just so. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like don't worry too much about it. It's late. We're, go. we're 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 going. Uh, and then from, uh, if you want to see these in full side, you guys oh, can go. join the yeah, Discord. Oh my god, he's on a bicycle. Yeah, he's on a bike. He's on his fucking bike. Mm-hmm. 
Adulthood sucks. It really do, man. Oh my heart! Then from PayPal. Look at the babies. Oh my god. Microplastics. And then from Pooji. Micronaps. This is my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna so I'm gonna beautiful. Go. It's so good. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. That's from DMZ, and this is from Leaf. Many friends. Oh, <laughs> Listen, Fuji. he wants one thing. XO XO logic. Oh DMZ. my god. <gasps> the boy! <again>. Lovely. <laughs> and then, there are... God, I, I showed this You're trying to be earlier, work. But fucking... <laughs> we <laughs> gotta <laughs> kiss people! Grow up. <laughs> and like, where they can <laughs> bitch it. <laughs> Come then, elderly. Gotta re up from DMZ. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. I won't make any pro more promises I can't keep. Yo, let's yeah. go! Yeah. Boy, boy, boy! Then we got a Stein and... Uh, is Dine and Bazil? Bazil? <laughs> Squat with him. Oh, so so like oh, sick! Oh, Holy yeah. shit, that's rad. And then we have. Holy Leaf. shit. Nah. Yo! The meat tree. The meat tree. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from uh, Leaf. Man. 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 <laughs> yeah. Man. DMZ. Sick. From oh, he looks BH amazing. Bemis. <laughs> then from Polaris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking sick! <laughs> you, you guys are incredible. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful. DMZ. And then from Lovely yeah, poor <laughs> John guys. And then from uh, Puji. Yo, sick! Yeah. Yo, fucking Fuck. rad! Yes. Fucking rad as hell! That oh rolls, God. God, that's that's yeah, so right. fucking good. Mm -hmm. Blood intense. That's really fucking that's good. <laughs> kinda blood intense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the film reel at the bottom. Oh, yeah, that's and then really cool. Fucking From excellent. Leaf? Yo! Yo, oh, God. sick! So much good fan art today, fuck. And then you guys are awesome. Why? DMZ. We are cheating. <laughs> let me, let me find <laughs> Just my singing. Man. Just, there we go. Uh, and then from more DMZ. I've been betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> I have been betrayed. Oh, God. And then. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yes! I love this. Oh, oh, so oh God. And this, is, this is great. <laughs> I'm gonna leave DMs. I'm gonna leave DMs. <laughs> DMZ. Oh. Yeah. I, oh. I want to thank you all for coming frog. out. Thank Jay for GMing. Thank Lovely. you all for watching. If you want to support the show monetarily, make sure to join the Sentiment TTRPG Patreon, where you get some sometimes some early peeks at some mechanics and other great things about this show. So Jay can just keep throwing stuff in it. Uh, because this is great. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's getting late, so. Mm hmm. Thank you uh, for streaming, Aloha! Yeah! Alright, say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye! Bye, everybody! Bye, everybody.